Red light on? Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I might have to go feed wagon shopping. I'm a dealer for Pintos. I don't want a feed wagon that I can park all my machinery in. No, but they make smaller ones. They make nice little ones in the tow. Just a single rotor. <laughs> Tip yours upside down and use it for chaff shelter. <laughs> <laughs> no, they make a smaller one. Probably a nice small one. You can still throw a big bag on the thing. Do you lock the door? Okay. Call the meeting to order of the Griggs County Commission at 1 p.m. July 3rd, 2014. Staff, would read it, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. John. Here. Neil. Here. Ron. Here. Sean Stephan is going to be late. He called me earlier. Troy's here. Review and approval of the agenda. I don't think there was any changes except for misspelling and Alan Stepper's name from last year. Oh, um, it's copied on both sides this time. Can you look at the two page? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything? System production programs. <coughs> I move we uh, accept the agenda as presented. It's been moved to approve the agenda. Is there a second for motion? Oh, well, second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay, minutes for the 6th of June and the 25th of June. And I don't know what to do with the 6th of June. I got it pulled from the paper. And you guys did approve it, so I don't know if you have to rescind the approval and then reassess. We accept it with the changes. I think so. So, uh, six meeting. And I showed you what the changes. Sean made the motion. He should be the one that rescinds the motion. Can we skip that for now? Um, mm -hmm. It's on the digital recording, so how about if we just skip all of the minutes and come back to until he gets here? Or for me. We'll postpone the review of the minutes until Sean gets here if we can. Um, since there's a question with the June 6th minutes. Uh, monthly office reports. Not less patient this time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Request to pay state radio. What are they doing for us? We do all our 911 calls. So this is a normal deal? It's a quarterly deal. So shouldn't this go to Cindy? Yeah. <laughs> And the monthly, I have pages 14 through 16, is 14 through 19 on the front. Looking at it, that's not enough pages for monthly office report.
care where the principal is just a state. Well, so Anybody have any questions on the monthly office reports? I make a motion that we approve our monthly office reports as presented. <coughs> motion has been made by Dale to approve the monthly office reports as presented. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Bills, page 20 and 21. This one you want to add, right? This one you want to add? I want to add that one too. 
not in the bills. This is one Wayne wanted to add. If you want to pass it down, it's for the Mexico State Radio. It's a quarterly payment we have to pay. Main Street Storage. He, Bob, stores stuff in that building. Um, was it Andy Anderson? Yeah. Well, uh, and we don't have county space for him to store things? You don't have to ask him. Well, who owns that now? Tom Johnson used to own it. Somebody else bought it. I mean, we certainly got enough county space to store things. We don't need to be paying outside storage. It's kind of silly. be in the budget if we didn't spend it. Oh, I understand that. Well, there are a whole base in here that... <clears throat> I mean, it isn't a lot of money, but it's a principle, I think. Did the county have a loan for that payloader or what? Yes, leased finance. Leased finance. No, that? This is the last payment this year. Well, I saw that. Then will there be a buyout from the end of it, or that is why? That's that's it was, total. It was a hundred percent lease. Is that the door department always has a 
carry over in their in their funds. They were, were they able to make that lease payment out of that existing year's funds, or the other ones didn't. They don't have much budgeted carry overs. But a real a, you know, a lease payment that has 100 percent the zero buyout is going to be a That's a loan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there has to be some residual value left in the piece of equipment. It's done with money. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way the market went back is you could have bought them with at least being so much. Yeah, typically it's 10 And then like at the end of the term, then you can buy out. Anything else? I think we should, I think we should instruct Bob Hook that if you need storage, there's plenty of storage somewhere on county property. I can talk to him. I'll ask him what's in there. Okay. okay. I, I move we accept the uh, bills as presented. I move that we accept the bills as presented. Is there a second to the motion? A second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Wayne. Am I up already? Mm. You are.
some odd million dollars. How was to be paid back, you know, the state has the money, but we have to, I guess that's probably the way it's going to be through the whole 1.8, unless I think at one time, you know, we presented the uh, engineering reimbursement request to them before we actually paid the engineers. But at least uh, this is what Sean thought we should do the first time anyway, was to pay the 201,615 to Mayo Construction for work uh, that has been done so far. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then there's a, should be a letter for reimbursement here somewhere. Is that the next one? It's not in here. This is an accurate reflection of the amount of work that's been done? I guess so. I, it's going to retain 50% of mobilization, 20%. What the engineers get paid to do is keep track of what's been done. Yeah. <laughs> do we have, this is included in the 2014 budget, do we have a line item for this? Yeah. Yeah. Not for the 1.8 million. No. Person, no, no, just for our share. First of all, we didn't know we were going to get 1.8 million or whatever it needed when we started doing it. Okay, so we, we need to amend the budget then, the 2014 budget, to show the $1.8 million grant so that we can then write a check against that. Otherwise, we're, otherwise we are overdrawing the budget just as it, it as was done with the, everything else that's been done here. We, we have it. Usually in the years past, we paid the bills, paid the bills, and then at the end of the year is when we, was the, is when we amended it. <coughs> You know, Whichever way you want to do it. Well, you, 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 the correct way is to do it, before, of course, before the check is written. It can be done afterwards, but I think that isn't necessarily correct because... It just makes it easier for the auditors is why they have us do it that way. See, we might not get or spend a whole $1.8 million this year. Right. There right. might be 200000 left over or whatever, 100 and some thousand left over that we and then and into next year. Budget. And that's that's the very reason why it needs to be in district budget, because then then you can carry that remaining balance into next year's budget. Then you have something to carry. Where, where if you don't have it in the budget, you have nothing to carry forward. It isn't really in our funds or anything though. Well, no, it, it's no different than a grant where if we got the grant and they deposited all the money in our bank accounts, then I can no, no. The, the the awarding of the the awarding of the grant or the awarding of the project is enough to start the, to to put it in the budget. Just like, well, we use the grant for the for the EOC center here. It was never entered in the budget, but it very well should have been, because then it would have gave us the ability to write the check, even though we hadn't received any money from the grant. The it, difference is because there's a balance in the FAR, but in their in their comp in the FAR comp. So you have the capability to write the check. For the 200 some thousand, but not for the 1.8. And that's not your total anyway, that's so just for this process. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually we'll get 90% of it back. Yeah, it, it's just, it's and just. will end up by right. 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 We get it over here for a The actual amount spent will be what I budgeted. Whichever way, I guess. It's just in in my life if I think I'm gonna get some money, I don't put it in my budget until they actually get it. Yeah, but of course there's a huge difference between public and private finance and yeah, public finance has rules to abide by so that not that we're going to commit fraud, but so that, so that it can't happen. And it's easier for you just to have it do it correctly. No, the only problem about doing 1.8 is you'll never see it, and it'll screw up the budget if you do the full amount. Because then you'll have to add it and take it back off again. Because we won't actually spend 1.8 million. The no, state will. Okay. No. In the FAR, Tom, can't you budget? Revenue and expense. Yes, so you can, yeah. but we won't ever spend that money. The state will pay directly to that company. 
They don't pay it directly to us. Oh, they don't give us the money. No. It doesn't come over. Well, what are we going to write a check for? Then? We're writing a yeah, check just for this two hundred one thousand. Right. Well, that's budgeting. How you do out that well, way? I budgeted the, the percentage, you know, because that's what Action Creeks County is going to be out is percentage of which is one hundred or one million eight hundred thousand, which will be less than two hundred thousand. Yeah. So why would we write them a check for two hundred thousand? Well, because they've done. X amount of work, and so it's the same. It's the same thing. We got to write the check before the before the funds come to us. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard to get the funds to come to us. Well, we end up writing checks over the county for the full amount of this, and then we'll be ready. Right. Okay. Didn't somebody just say that we're not going to see the money come back to the county? Maybe Most of the time, you don't. Well, we'll see the ninety percent come back. That's different for them because usually because of Title this, Six they don't have us. This house bill money is is a different. When we do a federal aid project, you know we're just liable for the twenty percent of the project. And the state has the federal money that comes from Washington and stays in Bismarck, and so they pay the whole bill, but then we end up paying the state back up the twenty percent of, of the project. But so they pay it out. Now yeah. this, the, the money is ours, they're holding it, and this is why we didn't go out to Bismarck to bid this project. Neither is we, we bid locally. It's a, a local project. Yeah. You know, but so proof, proof of, in order to request our funds to come to us, we need to present them with a paid invoice. Yeah. Okay, on this then, we're responsible for the Title VI then too. Not yes, yes or because it's state money, we aren't, or not federal? State is responsible for some of that Title VI, and I don't know what our responsibility is. The it's not Title VI it. is... It's our uh, state money. I know, from the, the, the law of the Title VI is uh, the... But they've signed it, and we've signed it, more or less. So that we follow the rules of the state. Follow the rules of the Davis Bacon Act, you mean? And the, yeah. Uh, disadvantaged workers and stuff like that, that's all. And signed, I suppose, in that contract that we just. Well, usually since the in state the takes the whole of it, they take care of all that. And this time you're saying we're doing it all locally. So I'm just asking if it got taken care of. We are paying the contractor. Uh huh. Like what that uh, <clears throat> makes us liable for, I guess. See, when it's on this federal project, the state becomes a recipient of the federal money and then they disperse it to the colony. We're here, the, the colony is a recipient of the state money. money. And, and so it's just one step down. The federal money and the state does the same thing. They pay the bill presented to the federal government, the federal government reimburses them. We're just one step back from that. So we are the ones responsible for writing the check. If we don't have that in the budget, even if we get the process started, as the money comes in and goes back out, it will show that we overspent that budget. We overspent his budget by the amount of the cost of the project, unless we have a budget beforehand or afterwards. Because <coughs> it will show in and out. And no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean that's why that. <laughs> I mean, that's happened over the years. Yeah. And so then they just amend the budget because the money was in the fund, but it was beginning of the year, well, just like now I'm going to have to bring up some, some uh, problems with these federal labor. Mm -hmm. Or like Troy called my office, I was going that day about the river, washing away the bottom of the slope and uh, stuff. So, but maybe we should settle this first if we can, and then there's going to be some work coming up that's not budgeted for. Possibly if we go ahead and do it, otherwise, probably have to wait till the Road washes away, or the, or the water, or west of Benford, the road goes underwater. Or okay. I got an email on, I might as well go into that. I got an email on Monday from Brian Fuchs on DOT. And they are requesting any possible damage that we have to federal aid roads. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I compiled that site out there. The site that Gilbertson already, we hauled that $4,440 
worth of rock on 2008. Mm -hmm. And then the future, if that goes underwater, I said that we need a grade raise and that like about a thousand feet wide. They're 36 feet wide and five feet high. Rip wrap fabric. And so I sent that estimate into them. And uh, they're going to compile, compile all the damages to the other columns also and try to get a ER damage. Uh, so you're talking about this page here? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get a disaster for federal aid roads. Federal aid roads aren't covered under FEMA disasters. So there is some repairs to them that aren't budgeted. Or probably they have to spend it. I mean, it can use gravel money. Yeah. You know, we can that's budget that out and somehow. It's possible to do that. Yeah, this, well, let's do it right. Let's let's is this let's yep. take care of this thing yep. first. Yep. Is this going to be the total amount? This one million four, or is it going to be more than that? That's the remaining after this, right? Okay, so it's actually one six. It's one million six hundred and whatever. Okay, and they already okay the actual project, right? Yeah. At that amount, or yes, okay. the same thing. So Whichever way you want to do it. It's just as simple as to yeah. amend the budget and add this project to it on a line item for the full amount. And then and then the money can go out and it can come back in and, and it will when it's all set. You should budget the revenue at ninety percent too, I think. But the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. The whole budget should the whole amount should be there for the total project. On the expense side. Yes. And now the revenue 90%. Well, the 10% the, the of county kicks in will be on the revenue side too, so that it balances the project. Sure. Yeah, the project has to balance. So. Yeah, you got to amend both of the revenue mm -hmm. and the right. expense. Right. We'll, 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 so if we, if we put the 1.667 in there, 90% of those funds are coming from the state, 10% from us, and then when it's paid out, it will balance it. And if it runs over, then you just then you just amend it or take it from somewhere else. And this is F A R. No. Hi, baby. Well, it'll be it'll come out of F A R. Okay. Or is that? It's a federally road and right. and that's where we're just putting the money. So and there's you know fund there of eight hundred thousand. But we're only going to spend our 10%. Yeah. 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 But see, if we don't budget it at the end of the year, it'll show the overspend your account by one point, whatever. Right. Because yeah. revenue will go in general. Correct. Well, but if we, we, if we have an account, no, 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 revenue goes, goes in that they are. It, it can. Wherever you dis design it to go in, it does not go into general. Yeah, no, that's why we have to set it up so it has a return path back to where it came from. Okay. Is that a motion? I think about it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, they, maybe, they, maybe, they, maybe they go one point. We've never had to do it before. Usually we just amend it at the end of the year, like I said. I think we should create but a you can, line item budget account for this project. And we should move a 10% out of the federal aid rule for our portion into it. And then we should show the state portion as committed, so that then the thing will balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time you do that, though, you because it's only going to be for so long unless you do it for all the projects he's got for this year. Well, because it's, it's just dead space then after this year in these line item deals. Well, no, can it be a line item within the federal aid within the federal aid budget? We have a federal aid right. line item, and what you could do is a lot of time what isn't done is to code it. Itemize it within the federal aid budget. Um, line item. You say each one you put in has to have numbers like this, okay. okay? And then they have to be done a certain way. Not saying that they're done right. Um, so if you go to FAR, 
So you have to sign a general ledger number to it? I'd have to sign it and then be dead after this year unless you use it for something else. Can you kill him? Well, could we make I suppose we could wipe him out again. Make it a subcategory of the federal aid budget? Can, can it be done that way so that we can just to keep track of it so we know what money went in and out or not? Okay, you okay, you only see things this way. I don't give you an account history because no. account history is about that thick. No. Okay, no. right now. Account history, you can write your checks and then put a code in the middle to tell you what project it's for. A subset, yeah. Yeah, but, oh, we could do the subset the other way. Yeah. There's a three-letter code. You want to do it that way? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a common origin, okay? And it's a three-letter code, and that's as big as it can get. Mm -hmm. And then we do a monthly report on it every month, and that will give you the expense and revenue for that origin on that one. We've never set the origin up for the revenue, but we can do it. It's Whatever you decide to call the project, there can only be three letters. And that's an easy way to pull it up then. And that will be contained within the federal aid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know if that's the way to do it. I, I, I presume it is, but I, I don't know that for sure. But we but we still on your expected revenue, can you put that up. on your revenue portion of the budget? Can you? But that, like we, like when I've had disasters, and I thought, well, next year I'm going to get hundred thousand dollars worth of work done. So I put that into my expected Six. revenue because it's going to come back from FEMA. Can you put it? That I know that probably would go, but it would show it as the revenue or expected revenue. One point. When you do it with a grant, you put the, the amount in that the grant was awarded for. So you do the same thing here. If we have if we have paperwork awarding us 1.67, that's that's what the account balance of revenue would be then. And that's the that's the corresponding documentation that shows that yes, we had an expectation that money was coming here. The, the you do need to set the line item yep. in your FAR for Either call it state slash grant or grant slash state. I think you have that in your revenue side already. You just don't have it in your expense side. Mm -hmm. uh, revenue side. It could be house bill something. Yeah, that's simple. Maybe we will get three letters, so that's going to be tough. House bill number one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the hard part. It's only three letters, so. Well, even for that, it's called oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have oh. federal money in here, and you just, so we'd have to add it in both, actually. Because it's just federal money, FEMA money in here. <clears throat> Is that the right thing to do? the best way to do it. If you can think of the three, if not, you're going to have to do a light angle. We can just assign it to cold. I mean, the number doesn't matter. As long as you know what it is. It's hard because all your projects are done by the year. Like I said, that's the hardest part, is the code. You have to think of the code that well, it's just the road, right? Yeah. Well, the project, the project name is CNOA. Just name it CNO. But the other ones might be CNO, CNO too. Yeah. Well, that's the only one we have for now. But, you know, I thought you were doing that little thing. No, that's not, that's not this. Oh, that's the other FAR money? That's, we pay 20% of that out of our, from the state base. I mean. With our. Doesn't, in your money. doesn't matter what your name is, right? It always we know where it is. So look at it. Call it WAY for <laughs> start of Wayne. Wait a <laughs> yeah. What is it? The Sutton Road Project? SRP. 
Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. There you go. <laughs> You better check with Harold and see if that's the right way to do it. I, I mean, I, I'm not an expert on this. It just okay. So if you say Harold says to do it this way, then that's the way we do it. In the meantime, we need to pay this before we're going to take the money out. Well, yeah. I, I, I suppose if we're going to make it a subset of the federal aid rule, it needs to come over there. I would think. I mean, okay. So the motion to sign and pay. And have Harold set up the account. <laughs> or have Harold, how do you do that? Um, have Harold advise. Hmm. I'll figure out the way. He'll help you. Yeah. Seven. There's more from the PS on FAR. Well, like you said, it's not acting right till the next meeting. It's not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Put you over already. Right I move we pay Neil construction on the Sutton Road project based on progressive estimate number one. Funds to be. You pay the engineer, or do you pay them directly? The engineer is uh, paid out of this, looks like. I mean, so attached to the. Uh, Pay and sign, Gail? Where did I see that? It has to be signed, too. Yeah, paid and signed. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Progressive estimate. <clears throat> yeah, I'll second the motion. Seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carried. Okay, then. Okay. Okay. Oh, that, I know where that was. That, uh, I think we'd already paid. We uh, paid the elevator and was attached to the university request to fix. Brian Fuchs, letter to Brian, requesting reimbursement of 90% of the bill we just approved. Is there any discussion on that? It's to get reimbursed for the 201,000, right? The board needs to take action for me to sign this and send it into the state. Request funding reimbursement for House Bill Project 1358. It's been moved to <coughs> request funding reimbursement for House Bill 1358 funding. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Second by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? I, I think we should. I, I think we should. Have the amount 189 733 oh, 85 in the amount of yeah, yeah. $189,733.86. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? No. <laughs> no. No, no, not a bit. <laughs> See, none will proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Thank 
And he already talked about the storm did stuff. He talked a little bit about the flood damage, potential flood damage. And mm -hmm. this is the email that I sent. Yep. Actually, you know, you know, the state's shipping all that money down there since Laura will put them pumps up. Maybe they should pay for that bank, that bank restoration down there. We're talking about by the Shine River where the yep. Red Road Road crosses the yep. river there. Yep. It's going to take that road. Oh, I know. And uh, I haven't looked at it, but I've had, you know, I'm in Macville every day and I've had several different people come in and talk to me. I'm just glad I don't drink it in that. Yeah. There's <laughs> other roads. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is a I like to go straight though. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to get them all? <laughs> yeah. Call Spinner. <laughs> I took pictures of it, and you don't suppose I left my pictures up at the shop. No, that's probably a valid. That's probably a valid. I don't know. Course of action. I don't know how to go about it, but I mean, it seems like they're causing that issue. Sure, they, they increase the flow in the Cheyenne River because of the pumps on the Devil's Lake, and that that, that that can be argued that that's certainly causing some of the damage. Right now, whether or not they'll want to open that can of worms because I'm, they're just destroying that river. Yeah. From I've heard a lot of time all the way, way, all the way, complaining about the yeah. river banks washing away. It's normally a high flow comes from the ground flow, so it's, right. it's yeah. kind of unprecedented that that much water flows. Yeah. Well, I just think we would be better off with a giant flood for three months and have that water stabilized than have this thing bank full and eroding the banks for years and years and years. Yeah. It's just accelerating the process. <coughs> But that's just conjecture on my part, of course. Yeah. So what are our options? I don't know. I, I'm sure well, this year probably we don't have to do anything tomorrow, right? I don't know. It's. it's I was surprised. It's from here to that wall, practically away from the bottom the road. Up. Oh yeah. I mean, it comes out and it just drops straight down. I didn't dare get too close because I can't swim very right good. <laughs> what? Is the road close? No, it's, I mean, the road is fine. It's just if you happen to go in the ditch, you're going to be in trouble. Just like crossing any lake or slough or whatever. Right. You know? But it's gradually, you know, you're only a little wider. Uh, this one solution I had was to put riprap down there, you know. But you can't do that without the blessing of the core, and that's not that easy to get. Right? I know. I tried one other time over by Stacy Summerville. Here it is. So maybe we just wait until it gets where it is a hazard, and we close the road, and then we inform the core that we have a problem. And and maybe something will come from this, uh, if this, because I'm sure there's a lot of damage all over. And if that happens, they'll send inspectors out. They'll come out and look at it. And then they'll give us try to give us a solution whether it's to move the road over, which I told them it's kind of the bridge is here. Now you're going to move the road over, so we're going to have that bend like we used to have years ago. It used to come down and go, and the bridge was at an angle and across. Well, they straightened all that out. So now, but I know anytime you're dealing with a river bank or water and the Corps of Engineers, it's very hard to uh, get them to agree to anything. I don't know if the water board can cut a new channel and build another bridge. I don't know if we have enough canorite. <laughs> but a little bit of TNT in the right place would <laughs> make the water run straight south instead of all those curves. Right, let's just take down here. It's eventually going to take over. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make that curve anymore. It's going to go straight across. And, uh, but I mean, all, so we, is wait all we got to do is, is keep watching it, I guess, and if it gets that bad, then we have to put up a fence, a guardrail, or something there, which the posts are eventually going to fall on the water. Should so. sure we have some signage put up? Maybe we'll make sure you yeah. the traffic yeah. down there. Flags up, but they haven't. Probably put some signs up there. <laughs> and then, like, uh, pictures of that west of Infra, too. I mean, the water's that far from 
one on top of the road. Yeah. And the only thing that saves that is that there's a row of cattails to the north so the waves can't come splashing in there. But if that gets very deep, the cattails won't go there. You see the state raised their road up only feet by McHenry. Yeah. So they don't care about the rest of us. That was a little gross what they did there. Yeah. And they were gonna put in a culvert and yeah. drain it into the Bolo Creek, but yeah. they wouldn't do that. And I just push all that water back to where it's for there and that road right the back of all. There's no culverts in that road? Yeah. But I mean it starts the way over west of McHenry that slew is all connected all the way over. All the way back to the to the back road to the county line or to the township line in the back of the road that slew comes all the way back there. So there's no outlet, it just keeps coming yeah. up. So when it comes up, it just comes up on the other side of the road there is. So Okay. One last thing you said to bring up is yes, and, uh, I was notified or informed I wasn't really notified, but I met Jill in the hallway last evening and she said that uh, the commissioners had told her that she was supposed to inform me that I was supposed to start spraying the, the road ditches. I think we should, yeah. How can we do that? Well, if we get somebody certified and we, we take so we take spray. it away from someone away from graveling and from doing important works that the road department is supposed to do and then take over somebody else's. It's always been a function of the road department. It's never been a function of the road department. No. Not in Griggs County. We, it's the always time, been a function board, of the colony. It's the always been a board, function of the colony hired people to spray mm -hmm. and the auditor was in charge and they they sprayed they were the temporary workers and at the end of spraying season they were done. Mm -hmm. oh, there were parts. He sure was. Walt Walt had the keys for the van down there. He had the keys for the truck. Just that he wasn't in charge of weed spraying though. They well were he was on the weed board I imagine, right? No. He just said his father's a secretary. That's it. Well, there wasn't anybody from the road department, I'll tell you that. It was always a road department truck and the tank. And no, no, it wasn't. No, it was belong to the weed department. Well, they did, they can it belong to the road department? I mean, it doesn't make much sense for for us to be contracting when we we have the capability of doing it ourselves. We have Jill for the expertise. We, we certainly have the work. There's nothing saying we can't hire some temporary help, just as you know, as they did before. Um, it, it would be a savings to the county. It would be it would keep everything uniform because right now who knows better where the weeds are than the county employees in the road department. Yes, and that in the past, then they were supposed to notify like when John was Swanson was in charge where the weeds were, the cattails, the willows. Mm -hmm. But there's 242 miles of county roads, and you got to spray both sides. That takes a little time to do. You can't do it on a rainy day. You can't do it on a windy day. Um, so we take away a gravel, guy driving a gravel truck to spray weeds. Does anybody know how much the contract to spray the county roads was last year? Then again, you know, there's, there's 240 miles, but just a small fraction of that gets paid. The yeah, but you still have to go over and still have to guide the miles. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you, that can be driven. That can be driven in a rainy day and mapped and go and then spray what needs to be sprayed. And, and Jill can do that, or somebody else can do that. I, I just don't see why we're contracting out work when we have we have an efficient labor force here that can do it. And then we need a sprayer, a decent truck. Well, all, all these are, all these things are are, are certainly with something with a big boom on it, and something with probably a rail and a nozzle. Yeah. New pump. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know anything about that stuff. So if you have the expertise, then well, please don't. What you do. Please, please don't. <laughs> I mean, well, we're. we're I, I think the way the system works is that. <laughs> If we need the knowledge, then we, we find someone with the knowledge and we can incorporate it into the system. This isn't rocket science. And just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean it can't be done and doesn't mean it isn't beneficial to the county taxpayers. So 
I'm not saying it has to be done, but it certainly has to be explored. And I think it's your job to help us explore that. Well, I guess I would have appreciated it. This is going to cause some trouble, feathers probably, but I would have been appreciated to be asked by you guys and, and not another department head to come and say, you have been designated to be the weed sprayer. At least we could have talked about it like we are today. And, and, why, and why couldn't we designate you to be the weed sprayer? That's what you know, I mean, I'm saying Jill told me that's how I found out about it. Sure. And, and, and that, was, that, that was that was a that was a perfectly satisfactory chain of, of command. She's not my boss. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's not my boss. I don't, I don't think she wasn't she wasn't supposed to tell you you were going to spray the weeds. She was going to talk to you to see if it was feasible for you yeah. to. She. I don't think we exactly the way it came across. I, I, yeah, I, it wasn't supposed to be presented that you're going to do it. It's. The conversation was supposed to start, but if it's if it'll work, I did mention it to Kenny, and of course he'll do whatever I ask. I suppose unless he quits, but uh, I don't know if he's certified now or if he has to be. Yeah, but I mean we don't have the equipment. We've got some stuff that was used, or sitting across the street that was used whenever it was 15 years ago or whatever, mm -hmm. before they started uh, having it right away or somebody to do this for him. Mm -hmm. It's been longer than 15 years. No, it's been 20 years, whatever, it doesn't matter. No, at our age, uh -huh. At our age, 5, 10 years. <laughs> I just put down 15 because if I said 20, I'd probably have been wrong. Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's been a while. It's been, it's a, been while. a while. Been a while. And, yeah. and that doesn't that does not change the fact that it can be done. And I think it I think it should be done. No, that's up to the, the voters of the commission. But I think it's I think it's doable. I think it's within the the realm of, of the duties of the highway department. The, the other companies side of the government. We're going to see highway trucks all the way. I don't. And even 100 with that, yes, I know Nelson County is responsible for it. Yeah, so I don't know about Barnes, Cass, well, I Trail, know. Steel. I know it's doable. Steel contracts. Barnes County has their own lead board. They have rangers and pickups and trucks and a fleet. I don't think Steel County spraying is your different time to Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's not a good option either. The other thing is um, you made the motion for him to do it as the weed board and I think you need to make the motion as commissioners. I don't think the weed board has the power to do the, to give tell the road department it has to clear weeds. Hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Sounds right. <coughs> Do we have a cost comparison? I mean, what was the amount to subcontract it out? Um, you get a read report in your deal, and yeah, there's a kind of amount in there. There is a fixed amount, and, and the job that's been that was done is substandard. I mean, it's not. It's if we're just if we're just checking out a box that we got it sprayed. Well, that's it's different than actually. No, but there has to be. There's a report filed with the state every year. Yeah. I don't and um, they tell us where they sprayed, and, and then we have to give the information to the state. The pages for the um, I think in the past, too, the liability of that's got over spray or something yeah. spray. Uh, Kenny was telling about they had sprayed some railroad track or something, and there was a temperature inversion, which I know nothing about. Supposedly, the spray went down and followed this coolie went into this. The old man killed a bunch of crap. So, of course, they tried to get the in, I guess, to pay for it. What we've spent is not that much. It's between the chemical and, uh, like in 2010, we only spent um, contractors, not even 5,000. How much? And chemical, 4420, so less than 10,000 in spray. In 2010, 2011, it was a lot less. It was um, less than 2,000 for contractors. Chemical was less than 2,000. 
In 2012, it was 2,600 for contractors and 1,500 for chemicals. Last year, it was 460 for contractors and chemicals was 575. $575. So it is not being a job to do. But it, it is. It, so then we're talking about a very limited Well, it's time. only when they had time to spray for us. That doesn't mean they got to spray everything we needed to have sprayed. I don't think last year they got hardly anything. I wonder if, is, is Dave Batson, is he short of labor? I mean, would he have a truck we could rent for a week? No. Um, he just, I mean, it just isn't, as you saw, it isn't profitable for him to do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's why he wants to get it anymore. This many times, I mean, we wanted willow sprayed because they go up in the ditches and cause snow problems and stuff, and they never sprayed them, or they did it at the wrong time. And, you know, so this is, a, a benefit would be we would, well, have, would be if, we would have control over what gets done when. That would be. It's just if you want. Some people don't like to monkey with chemical. They say you can drink Roundup. I don't know. But you're not going to be spraying. <laughs> you're I'm not going to be spraying Roundup. You're probably getting yeah, something worse. Okay. But it seems, it seems we. I mean, Jill. Jill is a supervisory position over all the licensing in, in Briggs County. So if we have that already on board, it isn't too hard for her to teach a class on how this needs to be applied. And it could be done in the afternoon. Next winter, we, you could certify three or four different people. And we can, the truck that's sitting down there, the tank and everything, the engine, that isn't a big deal to go through that. It probably costs a couple thousand dollars. You can have it sitting there when you see a problem, or when there's a, when you have time, or when there's a need, I don't, it wouldn't be that big a deal. And and it isn't as you just saw. It isn't like it's a real labor-intensive thing. It, it's not asking you to eradicate every dandelion in the colony. I think it would be more of a benefit. Then you could do some things like that, and you wouldn't be under any pressure to. Well, why didn't you get this done? It's, it would be something as, as they, it would be something that, that as they did, they just well, we couldn't get it done, so we didn't get it done. No, because our priority, I guess, would be the the road safety as far as the gravel and stuff. Try to get that. Yep. Yeah. We can. Uh, and you know, it really doesn't amount to much equipment. The, the, the boom part of it. Yeah. He said they have a long boom on one of their trucks where they reach way out into yeah. the ditch because if it's wet, you can't yeah, drive right. under yeah. the And the way it used to be done was just if they sprayed way out there and, you know, yeah. and, and it would spray 25 feet and they soak it down. And really all they were ever after was a spur anyway. Yeah, it never killed it anyway, so. It but being but because the colony is the enforcement arm for the noxious weeds, it, it's kind of hypocritical for us to be telling landowners they have to spray this virgin and the colony not spraying this virgin for their on their on their own stuff. So it all it almost has to be an effort made at it. Unless you make the landowner, can you make the landowner spray? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Why you make them mow? You make them. I'd rather have you down. <laughs> 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 You're just one person. I think and the county is responsible for the maintenance of the right away. For the county? Yeah. For the county right away. Yeah. He makes a good point about the, no, they got about the mowing and the that, that the mowing and the rocks and the trees. Yeah, really, they're supposed to take care of the thing. The landowner is supposed to take care of the trees. Any obstruction that's in your Right. Very ditch. But the county has usually done that. It's always done that, except in the river we don't dare because there's too many. Yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't hold up to the to legal review either where there's been there's something from some counties out west and in other places where they require the land to mow and the right of way and of course why would you mow the right of way when you don't have control of it? The county has control of it. So it's been one of those things that well we'll do it. The landowners do it, but push on the shop. I don't think there's legal standing for it. Yeah, all, all over, that's, we're one of the last places that requires that. 
Right, but I guess I'm just thinking of tree trimming. So the landowner gives up 66 feet for a county road for the public's use, and then they're supposed to spend the money to trim the trees. <laughs> well, I don't think we would say that's right, but we'd say that's the way it's been done. And, but no, we always trim the trees in the river yeah. and whatever, you know, but I think in the township road manual, I think you will see that it says that the landowner is responsible for, for the township right away. But anyway, they didn't, yeah. none, of it, none of it holds up. If they have use of a tree, they're supposed to maintain it. But that's the main anyway, there. Hey, when we were going through this process of getting that ranger and stuff and last commissioners, we got approval to get a trailer to haul that. First, we got ramps to haul that ranger. Do you have a ranger? We got a ranger that we board in the road we department. Board yeah. Road, yeah. And, and, and one of the caveats when they got it was they could use it to put a sprayer in the back of it. We used it to, to spray, spray the, the guardrails. Yeah. We sprayed the guardrails with a little two gallon pump up sprayer. Well, I remember the minutes. Also in the minutes, it's to get a trailer for that and a trailer to haul my culvert some. Okay. And we haven't purchased either one because we didn't dare, so. You know, a, a, <laughs> a little sprayer for the back, I think, costs $200. Like, you know. uh, you, you want, want to get you a decent, you want a decent, I've got a 10 gallon sprayer and you got a $400. Four dollars. Mine cost me $1,800. $1,600, I think, for mine. <laughs> yeah. If we get one, we want one big enough with enough booms. I've got just two nozzles, yep. got a little 15 gallon, 10 gallon thing, but you're constantly filling that thing up. Yeah. Mine has big enough barrel. two 15 foot boomless nozzles yeah. and a 50 gallon tank. 50 gallon? 25 gallon, I don't even one. But anyway, I think we still have that yellow tank that you saw a lot. Okay, so, so you want to ask as that trailer and stuff, you still say that's... I think you should legal. make a list for us, and then we should review it. And see see what the number is when, you know, when you get... If you need a trailer, a sprayer, share with us what you think you need to do this, and then we should talk about it again. I mean, it's not something we have to have done by two weeks from now. Well, Joe said we should probably do it till fall anyway. So, and, right. and if we skip this year, why not? I mean, maybe we make it for next year. We get everything set up over the winter and get people certified. And, um, well, those ramps, she got ramps, but to drive up the ramps and then drive over the wheel well. Scary. Scary, especially for her. I mean, the guy did it. But we took the ramps back and got our money back. In Finley, and oh, yeah. we were going to buy a trailer. You don't want all the ranger in the back of a pickup. No. It's a 500, is that? It's a 500. Mm -hmm. I've, got a, I've got a 6x12 trailer myself for my ranger. 500 is about perfect. They have, what, we get 4000 that would get refunded so much? $1,600. Should buy an old stock trailer. That's what I use. Then I can I put a 400 gallon nurse tank in the front of it, the chemicals in there. I just jump in there with the bed with the, my four wheeler. Then if I park along the ditch, I can just park in the bottom of the ditch and drag the hose over there and just gravities it in. And you can, you can get some stuff done. And that satisfies the requirement for keeping the chemical Secure also, which there is a requirement for that, so it couldn't be sitting out in the back of a pickup. But if you could have it in a long trailer like that, that would probably be ideal. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll work on ponder it. that some more, Wayne. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Right. That's it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I move we have a five minute recess. We move that we take a five minute recess. Is there a second of motion? I'll second it. Second by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion?
If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Yep, yeah, perfect time. time. <laughs> you get to vote on our recess. A motion then on Wayne Scott to get that on for the week stuff that you did during the week meeting. Oh. I don't care if you do or not, but you haven't made me into it. Right? Yeah, well, we have to take the action. Right? Well, you did it. Right. You did this the week board. Yeah, that is an action, correct? No, I know. They know that. We took action as a weed board that we couldn't take. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Should have been to request admission. <laughs> so Ron's been sharing this stuff with you? Well, Cindy did. Ron didn't really email me or copy oh. me in on it. But so I asked know? Cindy to send it to me. Did you know that? Cindy, you can to a point. I mean, you have her do it up then. Yeah. Do what you did. Make the All changes. The were, uh, you guys have to approve or deny changes. Yes. And the just get a good You can. It says on the ones who didn't protest it. If they weren't even notified, they couldn't have protested it. You know what I mean? So the lots, you know, something that's a hundred, just minor changes, those things, yes. I just don't think we have any business to do that. Oh, that's my opinion. Right. I thought. There's local entities, that's government at its best. They're going to get really upset if they do this too. They know what they're doing. Yeah, and I thought we had discussed, me and Ron had discussed his notes, but they're, so I don't know if we're just sharing with all of you or where that's coming from. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. The last time I was late, so we're, we're off for a pretty good summer. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Really first. No, I know I have to go. Let's 
Let's do her. Emily, you're on. Okay. A um, couple things to maybe bring up before we get too deep into this. Did we talk to Jamie at all? I thought maybe he would be here today. No? Well, I talked to him some. I, okay. I mean, and, and if we do decide to reconvene the Board of Equalization meeting, he said that we would have to advertise in a newspaper for, right. for two weeks in a row. So if we right. made that decision, we'd have to advertise the... But he thought it was possible if well, we advertised it? I guess I, I just asked him. That he just told me that we would have to advertise in order to reconvene the meeting. Okay. And I guess I can't speak for him beyond that. <laughs> okay. Um, the state had originally said that since we had adjourned, that Cindy, right, he needed to make an opinion whether or not yeah. we could even reopen it. But yes, if we did, we do need to advertise. And I would need to notify the township hall and the assessors and every, everyone who got a notice of increase originally would need to be notified that we would be reopening it. So I didn't know if anyone had spoke with him or his thoughts. I thought he would maybe be here today. Well, he, he's by the, he's the, he was in Lakota and he, he was going to be up there for maybe half an hour. Okay. He thought he'd be here around 2 o'clock, but obviously so he's he not sure. Yet. He okay. might be here yet. Like, that's all I can there. tell you is that uh, he's... But it, but it definitely is possible to meet him. Yeah, that's what it's done by. And the time frame that the city gave us originally of July 2nd was not correct. It's their meeting is August 12th, is that correct? That's mm -hmm. state equalization. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we have, we have up until reasonably the end of July in order to request, in order to, to finish the, the equalization and send it to them. Um, and she said they might accept it. That's, that's a falsehood. They have to accept it. Um, so there, there were some things that were still a little bit one-sided as far as what I view their advice was. From the state? Yes. Okay. I, I, it is possible to reconvene this meeting. And the reasons being that we didn't necessarily follow the guidelines of equalization. Um, the, one of the most important things we didn't have, we did not have the assessors here in front of us explaining what changes have been made and it clearly states that in the Senate report that has to be done. So we were in violation of it from the start. And that is a reason to reconvene. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna yeah. let you know what yeah, kind of well, decisions you guys can Well on the way a second. Right. Uh, you guys are paid officials of the county. I would expect some guidance on what's done, when, and what's customary. I mean, don't just leave us flopping out here. But, right, I've spoken to both Ron <laughs> and, and John and gone with what the state has recommended and what I've been taught as tax director for our di guidelines for the abstract and turning in values, and that was June 30th. If he's saying that's not true, then I, you know, I'm not. No, well, I, I know Jamie has said that Nelson County hasn't even started to meet yet, but right. he can address that when he gets here. Right. Uh, that they're not finding on. I mean, they don't have it done by. The Century Code does state in there, and I brought the Century Code with. We can look everything up to the full statute, but that equalization should be within the first 10 days of June. So if they didn't meet and they have you know, recessed continuously meeting until they finalize theirs and if they've made, you know, their arrangements with the state to do it late, I don't have that information. It doesn't make it right though. It, 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 but you're right, the first 10 days in June, but it says shall commence. It doesn't say finish. And right. And then, so the it, abstract it, is the right. Thing. So it, it could theoretically go on for all of June, but it says shall commence in the first 10 days of June. Right. Yeah, not finish. And, and right, but the, I'm saying the abstract with our values is due to the state the 30th. Oh. And that's right on the or the state website also. So that's where I'm getting that from. Not, not in the century code, it doesn't say that. That might be guidance from the state tax commissioner, but that isn't, that isn't, based, that isn't based on any law that I've seen in the century code. 
I don't know that it's in the central right. in there or where, but that's what I've been taught as town yeah. sergeant. And, and so. my hard and fast rule on dealing with the government is I don't take anything for granted unless it's a rule, unless it's a law, because I've seen over and over and over again where government officials will let you go along with what they tell you to do and make, make, let you think that you're acting upon the law when in fact you aren't. And I don't see the Century Code or the June 30th date is there. It's convenient for them to have it by then, but as Ron just said, there's some, there's some, there's some counties that don't have it even started yet. And the state meeting is the 12th of August. Right. right. State equalization. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, go ahead. So Jamie was one of them. The publishing twice. It would have to be published, yeah. Probably in the paper only, twice. In the paper twice, so. And I know you had a note that Linda at the state told you by the 15th. Um, she didn't say hard and fast on the 15th. She said, boy, we'd sure like to get it by the 15th. Because they need to <laughs> compile all our numbers and mm -hmm. see if Griggs County is in compliance but, I mean, within she didn't, the 90 to 100. She didn't say, I'll, I'll refuse to accept it after the 15th. Right, I think it nice. said they'll decide whether or not they're willing to, which mm -hmm. is kind of what you would discuss too. But but so so how can they not accept it? Does that so that means that that then they can't can they can't they can't proceed with what they have to do? It has to be accepted. There's there's no other there's no other option. If we didn't turn it into them, they would come to us and say, "Where is it?" <laughs> they would the the the, the meeting they would, the, after the meeting it would come to us. So it's going to be accepted. Now that's a good thing. They have to have it to per, to conclude their business. Connie? I'm, I'm asking, was the abstract sent in on the video? No. Okay. Linda said her department would, I told her we were meeting today to go over it, and she said, don't send it to us, we won't compile yours until after you meet and decide what you're going to do Friday, after she yeah. talked to both of them. Yeah. So I'm going to let her know by the end of today, after we're done meeting, what we will be doing. And if I send it, if we decide to do nothing, or you guys make a decision to not change it, then I will send it this afternoon. That, that's, that's basically what I got over to you. And, and uh, they would like to have it by the 15th, but that wasn't a hard and fast date. What they do is, is take all of our information and they make up big binders for the tax committee and have our totals and our numbers and all of that any the minutes any people who make protests all of that is ready for the tax committee yeah. to hear it on the 12th so but i was going to say we don't have time to publish it twice if we went with the 15th that you had been given. <coughs> um, yeah, yeah, we'd be able to, if we publish it on the 11th and 18th, we could meet about, well, the 21st would be the earliest, I guess, or any time that week. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's when we should meet, obviously, is the week of the 21st as early as possible, if, okay. we, if we decide to do it. Yep, and I wouldn't, uh, the notices to all the people who were originally notified of their increases, I wouldn't be able to get that out till next week, which... It, we give them, we need to give them at least 10 days. So that goes back with the publication notice of having enough time. So 15th was not doable. And then the other thing to consider is the 16th, any time after the 16th, I could possibly have my baby. So I would not be here. So that's something I could be, I could be here right. into August, but they are considering possibly at 36 weeks that I could have my baby, and that would be the 16th. So just keep that in mind also. Um, I think people would really hate me if I was gone and we were not done with any of this. But, yeah. but I'm trying to make everyone aware just yeah. because. I, you know, this first thing, it says <clears throat> the assessors shall be present at the equalization meeting. Is that standard practice or doesn't that happen? We had two here. If there's the first one. It does say that. And I'm used to if there's Chris and his dad is a township officer. What's that? It was just Chris was the only assessor here. 
Oh, I was thinking Harlan Reinhardt, or uh, Arthur Rother was here. He's just a talented That was the time before, I think. I mean, okay. here to me is a relevant entry code that, that we didn't follow, and it, it's 5712.01. The chairman of each city board of equalization or the chairman's appointed representative and each city assessor must be present at such meetings during the first order of business. Now the first order of business is the city's equalization. So that's that's the first, what they call the first order of business. And then it goes on to say the chairman of each township board of equalization or the chairman's appointed representative and each township assessor must be present at such meeting during the second order of business. And we did not follow that. And by not following that, we were not able to ask the assessor questions on how they arrived at those values. And without being able to ask the assessor questions on how they arrived at the values, how can we perform the, the goal of equalization? And that's why they want all the assessors there so that they, they can, we can look at it as a whole, because not only do we have to equalize all the properties within each township and each city, then we have to equalize them against each other. I understand the goal. Right. But but we can't make somebody come to the meeting, can we? Are you going to go arrest them? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, then I'll have no fun. <laughs> I was just saying, it doesn't sound like it's ever been a standard practice to have all of them come. So they didn't. If the, And there were no objections or people who there were no had protests. protests or issues they would foresee somebody showing up here for so that would be another reason it's you know in the future it's something when they have their their assessor class every spring mm -hmm. that you know you can say we need you at this meeting we, we are following it to the t the century code it hasn't previously been enforced but I guess my interpretation of the assessors not showing up would be not to validate their assessment. If, if they can't be here and, and explain to us why they arrived at that assessment, then that assessment wouldn't be valid. And, and that would be my take on how, how it would take place. So, I don't think you could make that assumption because you don't know what's been done, what the standard operating procedures been in the past. But but I, I do know I do know what's really, what is required to assess a piece of property. And until until I can be assured that that procedure has been followed, I can't very well okay either a increase or a decrease because I don't know if it's been followed. I understand that. Yeah. And and so that's but that's point. not then the approach of the previous commissions. No it hasn't been. And it's not only just here either. What's that? They haven't. It's, it's, it's not. I mean, it's not like Briggs County are the only ones who don't show up. Oh. It's it's pretty standard. I'm used to them showing up if they had the cities. I know in you know Steel County, Hope showed up, Finley showed up, all the time. Townships rarely ever had any changes, let alone people protesting. Some would show up, mm -hmm. a good part of them would, especially with the soils and stuff recently. Right. But it's not, it's not common practice or standard practice for them all to show up in every county. Uh, right. Uh, even though the Century Code says, yes. But they don't know that it says, or are probably. They, they should have been, they were taught Okay. The stuff when they originally went through their okay. certification. Do you, do you know what I mean? But that, for many of them, was years ago. Okay. Years ago. They do right. a four hour recurrent class every spring. Right. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that we have to make them show up, but I'm saying, from my point of view, if they can't show up and answer my questions as how they arrived at, at their figures, then I'm not going to validate their figures with my vote. So um, unless they show up to tell me why there need to be a raise in that valuation, I'm going to vote no. I'm only one vote. That's but, but they've, they've done that at their township level, mm -hmm. and they've told the township 
supervisor is the mm -hmm. reason for it. For it. And they they've already approved everything. They have. That's not what the, that's yeah. not what the century code says. Yeah, I just read it to you, and this that, is the code. That is what has happened. That's the code. Yeah. I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what's happened. Well, All I, I care is how I conduct myself in this current situation. And I'm the only one person. You guys can do whatever you want. What I'm saying is, until it's done correctly, I'm not going to be part of raising any assessments. That's my only. That's my only. I, that's it. That's fine. Okay. I don't think that's reasonable. But and that's why we have five volts. I know. <laughs> um, I think in order for us to have expected them to come here, we would have had to do this homework prior to the meeting and at least ask them to come. Yeah, I, th I think if we reconvene, then we will ask them to come. A and I expect that every one of them will show up. Yeah. Here, here's, here's, if, if, if we, 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 we want to require the people that protest their taxes to show up, to protest it, but we don't want to make it mandatory that people that are raising their taxes show up to justify their side of it. So it's, it's, it's really... I a, don't disagree with you, John. I'm it, just saying... Not right. I, I'm not disagreeing with your interpretation of the Century Code or of this process. Yeah. I'm just saying we haven't been here very long, and so, what has happened is standard operating procedure in probably more than one county. I agree. <clears throat> and if we want to change that, we will have to let people know that we would like it changed. Well, one of the big reasons we're in here is that we disagreed with the standard operating procedure of the previous commissioners. I agree with you. I understand that, too. Okay. And we but, need to improve it. <laughs> no. Should we move through, I don't know, do we want to move through your century codes first and then your notes, or do we want to, how, how do you guys want to proceed with Didn't we just this? do that? Well, well, there's more. Just got a lot of notes. There, okay. well, there are I mean, I don't know. You guys tell me how we want there, to proceed, well, there, I guess. There aren't, I think, I think the, the century code comes into play once the meeting is reconvened, then we have to follow but we have to follow it, the century code for the meeting. The, the, the process we're going through right now is, are we even going to reconvene? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so then the relevant parts of the century code, I think, have been discussed already, it, is that we didn't follow the procedural parts of it in order to conduct a fair equalization meeting. Yeah, I mean, in the notes, I mean, the first one was we shall examine and compare the assessments returned by the assessors of all the districts. Well, we didn't do that. And it's also said... We did go through all the changes submitted. But, I mean, we didn't compare the, the work of the assessors. I mean, did one, one assessor, what, were they assessing very high compared to the other assessors? And if that's the case, we've got to equalize that. No, I don't feel, I feel the only issues we had were the ones that Barb did, and she would have equalized and assessed all the same between all of hers. Between all of hers? Yeah, the, the townships, there was very few changes, but we have, and they were changing classifications and whatnot like that. I don't... But, but we're still supposed to go through the process of equalizing between the, the work of the assessors of each township, between the two right. townships. I thought we did that by going okay. through yeah, all of them. I, I didn't but think we did myself. I, okay. I, I, I wasn't here for all of them. I got left and then I got here late. I was under the assumption after studying this after the fact that we were able to look at the all the material used to determine the, the appraisal, the assessment. And all we've ever been given is the end result that went up from here to here. Well, how, how did it get to that point? You want all of their calculations. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, that's the process that's supposed to take place. It is, is uh, 
the, the land, the, the parcel of land is supposed to be compared against all other parcels of like kind and determine the value. And that, and that not only entails, the way the government does it, the way the county does it, the way any, any government entity does it, is if we have a parcel of land here that we think is too low, we go find a like kind parcel that's too high and equalize it to that. Government always equalizes to the high side. When in essence, the very, very fact of equalization means that you have to also take into account the lowest price property in that category and equalize it between the two. But government never does that. They always find the highest price and, and that gives them the excuse to bring this property up to the value of the highest price. It is the citizen's job and the county commissioner's job to enable the citizens to be able to argue the other side of that equation. The, a property in the middle has, should have a 50-50 chance of going higher as it does going lower staying the same. There, there doesn't necessarily, if we continue to equalize the high properties, where do we end up? That's not equalization, that's just a constant increase in property values. If the market, I mean, I, I, are you referring to ag land or residential any, 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 any property. I think one that, example could possibly is, you know, I, I mentioned to you in something that uh, she picked a, a number of $15 per, per linear foot, and I asked mm -hmm. where that number came from. Because you know the, the fifteen dollar linear foot number resulted in everything being raised up to that number. If she would have picked fourteen or thirteen, then some of them would have went down, some of them would have went up, and, and there'd have been no net change. And that's where I was wondering, you know, why didn't you pick fourteen? But you know, I, that's where I thought we were going to get. We mm -hmm. will get her notes on just how she came through right. the process. No, we don't have to. I mean, out. before it's if we read the name, yeah. we, we don't need the notes today. No, okay. no, no but, I mean, as far as assessing we can't even end lot value, it, it, there was a consistency. Whether or not it was fifteen or fourteen or ten, yeah. even well, I think is where you're going with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It I mean, was done fair and but it could have it could have been equalized. It could have been equalized without being increased. If she would have picked another a number, different such as number. Words, that's well, what I that was going to see equalized. if it was every single well, parcel. Well, yeah, I, think, I mean, it, the net result was they increased. But I think, I think you're, I think you're taking a pretty narrow view of the equalization. Yes, the the let's use Willow. They were they were all raised equally, but they have to be assessed against every property, not just the ones we raised. So they have to be assessed against every property within that township. And then there is no equalization because why did we raise just these and not these? The, the subgroup that were all raised were all done uniformly, but they were all raised against the, the subset of other properties and that is an equalization. But they just do it for, they don't, they can't do it against a lot of other properties because the city of Cooperstown can't be taken against Hanford or Binford. They're both lower than Cooperstown. Same with Sutton. It's way lower than Cooperstown. That is my point. So why did why did ten properties at Red Willow Lake, why were they raised and, and when there's ninety properties, ninety different properties out there? And why what was it and what was it compared against? Like I said they always go to the high side and try to take that. And you just made a very good point. You can't you can't use a property Binford compared against Cooperstown. Although when they reassessed Red Willow four years ago, they used Maple Lake, they used Jamestown Reservoir, they used Ashtabula as like as like properties, which of course they can't do, but they did. So we have to talk, and we we can't talk in generalities. We have to talk what's legal, the way it's supposed to be done, and we need to follow that. And and I uh, I understand that that there's a precedent that's been done this way before, but that's what's wrong, and, and I, I wouldn't do it that way. I think Vanguard did all that, the first assessment. That, that's where I was going to go with, if we were talking egg land or commercial and residential, is because the, that is the system that is used for residential and commercial is Vanguard, and so it does keep it consistent whether you're in a township or, you know, one township to another valuing a home that's a one-story, you know, fair condition, that type of thing. It, it, there is a, a base to try and keep it uniform. But Sutton is still an example without Vanguard. 
you know, that, that the lots were raised, and it wasn't Vanguard that raised them, it was just an assessor right. that decided to raise them. Right, and again, I would go back to, you know, there's that was discussed in... Huh? There's history, you can go back, and I remember raising Sutton every year, we had an assessor that would do it every year, every, and it was just a lot of work, because they would just raise it three dollars, maybe. Because there's history the market. doesn't make it right. <laughs> and no, that's what I mean, know. it's just... It's, 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 it's trying to keep it, the sales ratio in line for for the county and, and a lot of other things into consideration, but it does go back to, it was discussed with the township board at what rate she did do it, decide on it, and raised everyone, and they did approve it too, so... I mean, and, you're, and the city constables. Yeah. And there was and, no protests. See, Cooperstown, Cooperstown had to go up because it wouldn't work out no more in equalization. They hadn't, they hadn't checked their, did their taxes or assessments there from 17 to 20 years. And so then they just, they finally, they talked about it for about three years about getting Vanguard in here, but they said they didn't have enough money until it comes to the point they had to do it to the, they would just came in and said, okay, it's so much in the state. Whole, the whole thing the state was told. Who came in and said we had to do it? The state? The federal or the state? The state did. You had, you had to get equalizers. Cooper should have been sliding along for a long time. They hadn't assessed anything for 17 to 20 years. That is absolutely blatantly false. What's that? The state law says that every piece of property within the county has to be assessed on a yearly basis. It never was. They are. They're not. It was 17 years. Assessed. Long, it long, 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 long. Change, when, they sign, when they sign every year, that means that property has been assessed to its true value. They assessed it, but they didn't change it. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't say it has to be changed. No, he's not saying that it was changed. I mean, that's all you're saying is that it was never changed. It was never changed. It, it, years. It, because it didn't have to be changed because they assessed it every year at that value. Yeah. And, and that, that, is, that, is, that argument that it hasn't been assessed in 17 years is false. Every year. Every year that is a true and yes, it was assessed, assessed but, but never changed. True and fair value is determined every year. And that can be determined by assessment. It can be determined by any form you want. But when that's signed, that is a true and fair value for this year. So if the property went up 400%, that means you have to justify an increase in one year of 400%. And that can't be done. But it never went up. I mean, it never went up, even though you say it was assessed. It just carried the same. Um, the yes. true and value. Every year, the tax, the taxes have to be the true and fair value. Right. So if you, when, it's, when they sign off that if the property is worth X amount of dollars, that means that the assessment was done or determined it didn't have to be done because the property value had to change. It is assessed every year. It's assessed every year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's assessed correctly every year. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's right. That's, that's what it is. You can, you can sign off on it. You can always argue that it's not yeah, assessed correctly. Exactly. <laughs> but the minute, the minute it was signed off on, it was determined that it was assessed correctly. Yeah. It, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't professionally assessed right. for 17 years. Right. right. Well, or outside assessor. Well, it wasn't it's outside not. assessed. No. Um, a contractor hadn't been hired for 17 years. That doesn't necessarily mean it was incorrect. Right. It was correct. When it was signed off on for that year, they, they certified that was the correct true and fair value. The, the, the Century Code says it has to be that way. And then the state finally decided to tell them that they weren't doing it right. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. The state doesn't get to make that determination, would nope. be the argument. Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to argue is, that either. Cause yeah, because they do the ad lab too. <laughs> That's for the equalization. So they, we went up 10% one year and another 8% another, and this year they asked for 11%. State equalization is what your state, what your county's with. The state. They don't have the authority to tell us what to do. What well, they do, though. Is, no, they don't. Absolutely not. Well, they may not have the authority, but they do. But they do it anyway. <laughs> And there are counties, there are counties, you know, that, that do not follow the um, productivity input index as far as assessing values. Nelson County doesn't. They pay the If they're this. not on the soil, using the soils, then That's they right. do have money withheld. Five percent. Input into. Yeah, five five percent. And and if you if you balance that against the nine and ten percent increases, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you probably shouldn't be doing it yeah. using the soils. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen the whole thing. <laughs> And, 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 I'm just saying and, there and, is and, that is the consequence of not <coughs> doing the flow. Yeah, and on, on another, another as long as we're talking, uh, talking the way things have been done and have to keep doing them that way. There is within the taxation regulations, we don't even have to have a modifier for pasture. We there's there is a we can we can we can classify it as pasture land, range land, range land or farmland. And it does not have to follow. It does not have to follow the productivity index to determine its value. Its value can be determined on the sale, the sales of that the land, which is the real, which is the real indicator of production. Because no one's going to pay three thousand dollars for a piece of land that can only produce enough money to pay for I've five I've never dollars. heard of that. Doesn't mean it's not right. I've never been taught that anything with farmland can be based off of sales. But, but uh, again, I'm not saying it's not right. I'm not, you know, I. Then you run into recreational properties that skew that number. People pay more money than pastures for year on. Right. They were going fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars out of one. Are people buying it for hunting? Well, or buying yeah, pasture no, land along the lake and putting a cabin on it. Yeah. Anyway, the, the question was whether or not we're going to get <laughs> not to mention any names. Uh, <laughs> for me? <laughs> no, I wasn't paying attention. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it was well deserved. <laughs> I think you were talking probably. Well, actually. <laughs> Um, the question is whether we were going to reconvene the equalization meeting. Another thing in there, I mentioned that we did. I, I mean, it says in here the County Board of Equalization, the County Board of Equalization does not have the authority to, to reduce any such assessment. Well, we did, you know, like for unless Rosendahl. the property owner has been. Well, yeah, but I mean, for Rosendahl, for example, she assessed it at and three point two million or whatever it was, and we reduced it back to three point one or whatever the twenty thirteen. Yeah, I don't know what the numbers. Prior you, 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 to you, that you, part of the century code, there does say the board may raise or lower valuation yes. of classes of property, only so to equalize the assessment. So you can, and it. The where you noted it, it does say of those who have not first Protest. appeals, but again, like the lots for Sutton, if it was under the three thousand or and ten percent, those people weren't notified. So right. in that case, it doesn't apply to that. Well, yeah. it, it doesn't mention ten percent here. I mean, no, that's no that's when you're. <clears throat> Required to send out the notice of increase to those landowners. But ten mean, percent or three thousand dollars. And yeah. And so the ones, all the you know, the say Sutton hundred dollar lot yeah. value changes, they weren't notified. Yeah, but so I'm, they just, didn't I'm just reading it from point two point B. Um, the County Board of Equalization does not have authority to increase any such assessment unless it first gives notice by mail. It doesn't say ten percent. It doesn't say three thousand dollars. It just says you can't do it unless you send a notice out by mail. To increase, you said. Yeah, to increase. But we're not looking at increasing. Well, most and you guys as a board. But, oh, but yeah, she uh, already yeah. did it at her local level. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I... But if if, so, if you went on to read, the Colony Board of Equalization does not have the authority to reduce. <laughs> Any such assessment, unless the owner of the property or the person to whom it was first appeals to the county board of equalization, it goes on to say, by either appearing personally, right. by a representative before the board, or by mail or other communication. Right. So the other communication could be the, the somebody walks up to Troy and says, "My taxes are too high. I can't make the meeting. Fix that." Right. So we we do have the ability to lower those taxes without having that person here. Right. I, yeah, I wasn't yeah. arguing. No, I, I just I was clarifying Ron's yeah. okay. that, we, that we went against that we went against the central yeah, code. We really did. Okay. I mean, it, it was expressed to me 
in mass that they, they didn't want that happening. Maybe not every person in will, but 90% of them. But anyway, we're still on, on whether we should reconvene for that. Can we make any headway? Well, I'm going to move on to the next agenda item pretty darn quick. Okay, I make a motion that we reconvene the tax equalization. It's been moved to reconvene the tax, e tax equalization. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? I'll just add, I don't think there's any downside to reconvening. You know, it's just all upside. I don't know what the upside is. Well, doing it correctly. Quantify it correct for me. Where it says that the township assessor must be present, we'll call him and get him here. Quantify it. I just Qu did. Quantify what you have identified as inequality within the county that makes it worth the time and effort that it will take to reconvene and go through each one of these calculations. Have you... Do you as, far as, as far as a dollar savings, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm hoping we can come up with some dollar savings. You don't know that? No, I, I, I can't guarantee that we'll come up with dollar savings, but, but I think it's worth it going through the process I, to help. I, I think this has been most educational, and I think we should do it differently the next time we do it, but I don't think we should open this can of worms. The, the local assessors, the local townships, the, lo the local city council members, everybody had a hand in this. And in my estimation, the local people, I mean, that is the purest form of government is the township government. They put their heads together and they decided what what they presented to us was fair and I'm okay with that until next year. If we want to ask them to be involved, I think they will, but I don't think we need to try to unring this bell. But that's just my two cents. I guess I'm kind of in agreement with Troy. I, I think it's good we do this get the assessors to come and clarify everything for us for the next season, but let's leave what's done this year as it is and not. I don't think there's huge enough issues to impose this on the unsuspecting public. There, there were no protests that no. Township or no. city levels anywhere, was there? No. I can, if I if I may, I, I can I can quantify what I think my what I can quantify from my perspective. Financially, that it, it doesn't amount to a whole lot of money, but it, the amount shouldn't be the motivating factor in this. But the biggest thing to me that quantifies doing this is the restoration of the public's trust in the system. Because what's happened now is the reason no one shows up to these meetings is because they know it's futile. They show up and they complain. And having been and done it myself on numerous occasions. Because you never followed yours all the way through the state, John. I shouldn't have had to, Dennis. Why well, shouldn't you? Because the that's a lot of because process. Because no, that's the final. That's the final right. appeal. It should have been handled at the at the township level, or the county level, and that you just you just hit the nail on the head. Everybody wants to pass it off to somebody else, and the state has no compassion for somebody uh, individual in Willow Township. They are going to uh, automatically going to say no. Troy hit it. Also, the, the, the lowest form of government is the, is the most pliable form of government, and that's what has to take place. And if we would instill into the citizens the fact that they have the right, the duty, and will be heard by going to these meetings, we will put back into the system what's supposed to be in the system. And the fact that you and, and your compadres passed this off is the problem with the system. 
that's my take on it. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> Is there any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Might as well do a voice vote because I got a feeling. John? Aye. Dale? No. John? Aye. John? No. Dang. You're a decider. I have to vote. I'm going to vote no. So as we as we did it stands and the, That's the red red roll stuff and the Rosendale stuff all was stayed where it was at. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Brian Brian Township. Although I don't think that was correct. Yeah. Just moving forward, I mean we will something have, we will that have by here I can work with you guys and discuss before the next assessment season we'll and we can lay some new expectations for all of it. Well, I, I think we need to be involved as commissioners. If we want people to be more involved in the process, I, we probably need to take more interest in the township meetings. We need to go there and say, you know, guys, here's what we'd like to see. Here's the way this process is supposed to work, the way we read it in the century code. We want you guys to know that we are interested in what you're doing out here. And when it comes to the county level, we're interested in making sure that there's equalization between the townships within the county, and we want your help to do that. But I, I, I don't think it's going to be a two-week process. Well, it'll, it'll be a very quick process as soon as we get the information <clears throat> that Ron's going to put on the website. When people go on the website and they can go look for the lowest tax, rate out there and then and then the man there's been there's taxes being adjusted to that level that is going to change the whole the complexion of this whole thing and it's going to be back where it's supposed to be it, and that's a good thing John. yeah it and should, it fact, should be because like you can, said it's going on and on and on and on and people if in got, fact we can cons convince the citizens that their involvement matters because the, the people have been very well trained not to speak of. Well, they've given up. You know, they know it's kind of futile. Right. To try. So, so, so I, I think that that's what I say. It's not a two-week process. It's not going to be one communication that convinces people that that's the way it is. No, but I think Ron and at least my point was it has to start somewhere. And why not start it here? I hear you. <laughs> okay. I, I would like. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate yeah, it. It's not a very interesting subject, I'm sorry to say, but I have learned a lot the last couple of weeks. Well, you are welcome to come back. <laughs> and if, you know, you want some input or, you know, we want to talk to the townships, maybe yeah. the fall, the township meeting in the fall is a good time to start addressing some of the stuff before the next assessment. I season. think so. And yeah. we can go over that. There must be something wrong with neutral because I find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go back and talk about the minutes. So, so. <coughs> Sean, the reason that I waited to talk about the minutes, there, there were... Um, some things entered into the minutes kind of, I think, overlooked. Uh, and Cindy clarified it even more. If you, uh, if you go back to the meeting, the meeting minutes from June 6th, uh, there was some stuff in there that was kind of third hand. I think it's called the hearsay. The highlighted? Yeah. You can tell up here, she's a pretty yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all the minutes are highlighted. It's all highlighted. <laughs> and then the next page, uh, your, your motion to adjourn was in there twice. So I think the easiest thing to do is to strike that. Now, was there anything added in replacing this, or was it just struck? On crafts? 
Mm-hmm. You have both. Below, below, below it is it? Below is, is the one that got. So this is what got added. And the minutes were recalled, so they weren't published in the paper. So, correct me if I'm wrong, Cindy, but Sean, you made the motions to approve these minutes in the in the twenty in the, on June twenty fifth. Okay. And I think in order for us to under undo that, you need to make the motion to rescind. That motion. Rescind the motion. Yeah. No, no, no. We no. We make a motion to amend the minutes, and anybody can do that. We we can't rescind the motion. That has to be a matter of public record. What okay. was done, but we need to amend then the the minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just going to mention. I think on this part you revised here that uh, the architect Sonia agreed to it, right? Yeah, okay. All three agreed. To okay, it. so I just, I just, she hadn't gotten back to you the last time. Yeah, she didn't get back to me until when was it this morning? Oh, okay, but she did, so that's yeah. good. So I think we just, I think we just put forward the amended minutes. We leave all of those. Oh, was redacted. I think so. so this is replacing. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, if nobody has any objections to that, I guess. Any comments? So, so the motion would be uh, moved to accept the June six minutes as amended. Okay. Well, I think we have to rescind the motion. Uh, accepting them first. Yeah, I would think I would just in the motion that you had accepted those minutes and then to make a motion to accept the amended minutes. Because what we'll do is we'll pull those minutes. Because I can't think of another way to do it without pulling the exact minutes. We've done this before. I can't. <clears throat> I, I thought we rescinded the motion to approve them and then I can. You did them. it before the meeting was over, though. And see, this is. Oh. You're going from one meeting to a next meeting, which makes it a little different. Okay. Um, the problem is, is whether I pull, because you've signed them already. Okay. Right. I was lucky the paper pulled them, so they weren't published, as far as I know. I'll have to check the paper when... In fact, we didn't get a paper today, did we? So um, it depends on if she accidentally put them in the paper. I could do his way too and leave the signed ones and then take the new motion over it. Well, I think when you amend it, I think you have to actually put both. I think I think you would put paragraph above paragraph is amended and replaced with this paragraph. I think you have to leave both of them, but I'm not sure. Well, that's what I was thinking too. Maybe leaving both of them. Yeah, and leave where it says deleted or rescinded or whatever I mean, I and Sonia's, or amended. Sonia's preference would be not to have this paragraph made public. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, Well, <laughs> she was all right with it the way it is now because she was... She, the way it's amended, but she wouldn't want the she old She doesn't one. want the old one published. Well, that, that, how about previously approved minutes are hereby amended to reflect the following change and we can just put... That change. Now. Just, just this. I'm not, not that. Is what I'd like. I mean, I'd, I'd like to somehow. Well, Jamie's just have to this. answer that question, but I yeah. guess for now, maybe we can just have a motion to amend the minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Previously approved minutes. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I can just put it over the old ones and tape it on top of it. Okay. Yeah. But, but that means this won't be printed. Right. Yeah. It won't go to the paper. Won't go to what the I'll paper. do is, is just reprint and okay. tape right over the minutes that are in there. Okay. So I move that we amend the June 6th minutes as, pre- as presented. We adopt the amendment as presented. And not read them, right? Yeah. Is there a second to the motion? Paul, second. Second to Daniel. deal. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. All right. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Please review the minutes to the June 25th meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, these minutes are, of course, unapproved. But, um, You made some, did you make some changes on, the, on page 11, Troy, or no? Um, I think we need to. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I, I question the accuracy of this paragraph when Sally was here. Um, okay. In that second sentence, uh, the state court administrator, Sally Halua, stated that they have done studies on how long certain cases should take, and that determines how much time the state will pay for. Um, and if the county need, needs more than that, the county would pay. Um, not necessarily need more time to do the clerk of court duties. It was more time to do whatever they wanted that employee to do, if, if I understood it correctly. Yeah. No, no what, what I did was I took out that from and to the end, and I put in there stated or how much time the state will pay for based on that caseload. And that's really what the measure is for. Um, the way I understand it now, you guys help me out here. And then on the, 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 la the second to the last sentence, or the third to the last sentence, uh, we will have a contract with the state that the state will reimburse Part forty-eight percent of our court, court wages and benefits. Um, I think what they said was, we have a contract with the state, and that you can't that that shouldn't be there. That's not proper grammar. We have a contract with the state. They'll reimburse a hundred hundred percent of a point four eight employee yeah. correct I, I think we could replace the whole paragraph very simply by stating that we that we met with Sally um, whatever her name is <laughs> and yeah. Holloway. What? Holloway. Holloway. and and it was a mutual determination that the state's contrib contribution of 0.48 of an employee was sufficient to cover these clerk of courts duties within Greens County and that's really what they went away saying it is in a nutshell. Well, they yeah. determine yeah. they determine yeah. we only need a point for We eight. use this to measure your needs and this is your needs and that's what we're gonna pay and for. And we're not gonna if change you it. wanna hire more people than that, have a day. Yeah, but that that but, is but you don't need them to be the clerk of court. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and so they were fine with the way it is at point four eight. So again I think I think it should read I think it should read that after that it was determined it was determined by mutual agreement that the point four eight FDE yeah was sufficient to satisfy the requirements of the state and the county for Kirk of Court Services. How's the your agreement with them then? Absolutely. I I'm in agreement I, I was always in agreement with whatever they said they needed for the clerk of court because the clerk of court is their employee. No matter what she said, the century code says it's their employee. We just provide payroll services. But she didn't agree with you when you said that was their employee. Hmm? She didn't agree with you that that was their employee. I don't care if she agreed with me or not. The century court agrees with me. Uh, that's something I think. Yep. So read you the whole paper. I think I I think it needs to be because there at no time did she say that that 
that we were required to provide court, court services. That if we wanted, I mean, there, it was never said that we, we would require, should require us to have somebody here. We have somebody here anyway. We have a combination clerk of court recorder. So there's someone here eight hours a day, whether she does five minutes at a time with clerk of court or does it all four hours in the morning and that's it. It doesn't matter. We have someone here all the time that can fulfill the clerk of court's duties. There's no mention also she stated that in the last year a case study was conducted as yes. well, right? Yes. For our yeah. county. Yes. Yeah. They, they just recently. So there was just, there was a current there was a current yeah. case study that. Yeah. But I mean it, it, that's a given that it was you know again I all they did was they came and verified that they were that the point four eight was adequate for adequate Griggs for, County. Yeah. And adequate for the state judicial. Yeah. And we can adjust our budget accordingly by that. So if we go back and put in what you had stated, everybody's fine with that? It sounds right to me. I'm just speaking for myself. Unless I'm missing Not for anybody else. <laughs> well, I need to know it's all right with everybody. Yeah, okay. I, know. Yeah. I know. We're just still discussing it. Yeah, they, they never said they were going to move the court of courts. No. Uh -uh. We said that. And she said essentially they can if we don't enter into the contract, but we have no intention of not entering into the contract. My, my question to her was, okay, so we're going to have a half-time employee doing the clerk of court. So if we can't get it done, are you going to adjust your formula or are you going to move the clerk of court? She said, we're not going to move the clerk of court. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th that's the discussion I remember. Right. And I think we're getting a little mixed up on the, the point four eight doesn't mean that they're going to just be here half-time. It means that the duties during the day only require half her attention. Correct. Yeah, so she's here. That's why we have the recorder and the clerk of court together. We have clerk of court service on duty mm -hmm. when the courthouse is open. As long as Kelly's here, we have that. Mm -hmm. So uh, she shouldn't need to spend more than 48% right. of her time on those duties. Yeah. Right, and that's all, that's all we're trying to, that's all we're trying to yeah. clarify. Well, that's all I was trying to clarify is why are we then hiring one and a half employees for something that only is only deemed point four eight, right. and, and the agency that is using those services is fine with the point four eight. Did else? anybody get that wording? Well, I well, it's on the recording. It's on oh, okay. It's running. <laughs> Yeah. So that doesn't need a motion because we have. No, we'll send it to you before okay. we send well, it to the gonna, paper. Once you're happy, then we'll approve it again. Yeah, that's what, what yeah. I was. Well, you got you can just not just accept them this until the next meeting, until you get them again. Oh, you want to read it again, you guys? We can do two sets next meeting. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah I think that's be, And there's one good. other one in the last page. On tax director, and we've been on the next page. On the last page? Yeah, the last page here. Okay. It says tax director Emily Wiegand reviewed reassessment of Bryan Township. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go down through there, um, it says that the 2014 equalization at 2013 market valuation, seconded by John Wakefield, there's discussion the Egermont, and it says there's discussion the Egermont property increase on residential structure, Overby property has lot and structure increase. Saxford property has residential lot and structure increase. There was no properties that went from exempt to taxable and then Rickford and property had commercial and residential increases with five acres changing from residential to commercial. All, it, it, it makes the implication that we raised all those taxes or that we had those increase. It, it should say, after commercial, it should say all above increases were denied. But that's what you did below. I know, I know, but it, it gives it gives the implication. Sounds like the whole town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Where are we at again? Let's keep going. What? All above increases were denied. And then, no doubt, it goes on and says we voted, but it's so far removed from where we actually made the motion to where we voted, and with all these talk of increases in between there, it seems like we increased those properties. At least it did to me. So all above increases were denied. 
Yeah. All, yeah. All, and then it goes on to say all properties in Bryan Township were reassessed. There was discussion how different assessors assess this property. I mean, that can it be. It should say the very, the very. It should say all subject properties. Yes, because it wasn't each and every property in Bryan Township. No, no I said that's there. why I said above. It was oh. subject all subject properties. That's fine. Above oh. was. Oh, okay. yeah. It was the ones they're talking okay. about there. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's a little grammar in the last line too. It says yeah. uh, there was discussion on hoping that taxpayers coming to should yeah. be would come. Yeah. Yep. To the commission yeah. about their taxes. And one other thing I was a little uncomfortable with, just the commission congratulated Emmy on winning the primary election for Auditor of Steel County. I don't have anything against Elisha Washburn, so I, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say that we're endorsed, that boy, we're, we're happy that she won. I just assume strike that. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's right. It's, it's just. Yeah. It's well, conversation. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That I did it, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. And we can just strike the whole thing we, on that one? We were not taking action. Well, we, were, we weren't, yeah, <laughs> taking sides or anything. A good debate with Steel County wouldn't be down. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe give me a new game show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then on, the, on, the, on page 11, um, it's can we leave in tax director and we really read that she would train in a replacement yeah, yeah. she voted in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I crossed off the commission <laughs> for a steal and there was discussion about her schedule if she wins. I just crossed that all out and then just left tax director Emily Wigan read that she will train a replacement if she is voted in. Yeah. And want that steel count voted in at Steel County. Somewhere in there? Yeah. Oh, then, it is at the end. So then then page 11, the last sentence. John Wakefield abstain. No, John Wakefield recuse. You want it recuse? Yeah, okay. abstain has, I yeah, don't like that word. Okay. You don't like what? Yeah. It, it should be, it should be recuse. Yeah. Well, actually, if it is, it's a singular, it's recuse. I recuse right. myself or I recuse, yeah. I have that. No, on no, on the, on the bottom, no, the very last one. You had to recuse up. You had recuse up up far up higher, and then in the, the last one, you had the very last line. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, yeah. You said John. First, you said I recused myself, himself, from voting. That was right, but then I'm saying on the bottom. You, you, but you, you didn't recuse yourself because you, you. No, he did. No, no. He abstained from voting, but he did not recuse himself from the discussion. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. And you're supposed to actually not be in the discussion right. either, so, but not just the vote. No, we don't agree with that. Okay. You don't have to agree with that. <laughs> because then you're selling That's your legal back on the discussion. Black, white. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. I can talk yeah. backwards, but not on purpose. Yeah, I always. <laughs> okay, if someone wants to table the minutes, then please for the twenty fifth till next meeting. I move we table them until the next meeting. Is there a second to the motion, Ron? Tate moves to table the minutes till next meeting. I'll second. Second by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, I went. I was at the social services board meeting last week. Um, two of the members of the social services <laughs> <laughs> terms are up, and Joanne Angle agreed to serve another three-year term. But we still need to appoint her, or reappoint her. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, Alan Stucka has indicated that he has served on that board in enough terms. So he, he is going to, he is, he's not going to seek to be reappointed. Um, with that said, um, He's kind of down in your world down there, mm -hmm. and he gave me a name. I did not call her. I didn't know if maybe you wanted to contact her. Um, 
that Halverson, that they must, they live across the road from Joanne there, I think. Oh, okay. You yeah. know those people? Oh, the dog. Yeah. Oh, dog oh, wow. No, that's no. Miller's. No, that's, uh, oh, it's it's Halverson. Halverson. They're right off the... Oh, the church. Same church. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. 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 Crowd by Jimmy Bell's. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Jimmy. what's his name, right? No. no. Larry. Ray, her name Rachel. No. Okay, that's in the It's in my files, but they're crumb. <laughs> Halverson or Halverson? Halverson, same spell, the same as mine. Oh, it is, okay. Um, I can't He gave me her name, too, and I can't spit it out right now. Is it Ben? That's the kid. Oh, damn. <laughs> 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 okay. But he knows who it is, so yeah. we'll have to get me the name so I can put it yeah. in the minutes. It's there are many names that I'm in the phone book, so I should show And that'd be for the next meeting, too, then, for her name? Well, yeah, I think so, because I didn't, I didn't know if anybody else had been contacted or if you guys had anybody else in mind, or I just... Motion for the appointment of I'll move we appoint Joanne Hagel to the social services director for it, not director. Well, board cool. member for a three year term. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same as time. Motion carries. Dale, do you know that gal? Yeah. Apparently, so do you want to call her and talk to her? Sure. Um, the other thing that the girls at, at Welfare told me that <clears throat> when they had that building recited and new windows put in, uh, I think Redland Johnson of Jamestown did it, mm -hmm. and when it rained, when they get a driving rain, the water runs in, must run in the outside of the sash, and then down on the floor. And they have called that outfit, and they haven't really had much satisfaction with them. So, you know, I said, you know what, maybe this is something that the county commissioner should send them a letter. I know Craig Johnson will call I know the owner. So you want to try that first? Yeah, I'll call Because that's unacceptable. Is that on the east side, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we've had the same problem before. I thought they came once, but then they didn't have it. They came and looked at it, and he scratched his head and laughed, I guess. But, I mean, that's not rocket science. It's just science. I see what I'll call him. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Website review. Yeah, I mean, uh, today is the day we agreed to deploy the new website. Obviously, it hasn't been done yet, but and I've called Travis several times, you know, just to see what he's doing. But do you want to hire somebody else? No, I'm, I'm almost. <laughs> you know, I'm almost seriously ready to deploy it. And, and I mentioned that last time. That yeah, but there's so much gobbledygook on there. But there is. Well, uh, that. Yeah, I mean, on the old website, there's well, a I lot to of get too technical under construction. <laughs> but, but that's what I mentioned too. That we should get on the front page. It, the, the front page in particular, we should get rid of three quarters of that stuff. You know, you, you know, the news. You know, he had four pages of stuff on there, and I didn't. I, I like just a simple front page, something like that other counties do. And, and that's the main change. Well, I, it looks to me like he bought a template. Yeah, I'm sure he did. And that the news kind of flashes up every five seconds, and to me, it's distracting to to that. And then all the way down, you get all this other news items that supposedly <coughs> change, but. I just wouldn't bother with it. That's my opinion. I, I, Have you sent him an email? Or... No, I've been, He's kind of. Um... I've been talking to him, but I oh, guess, you have been talking. But, but not by the, 
But about other things, I didn't really criticize that. It was uh, some other stuff I asked. Because um, he was waiting to hear from people. Well, you know, and y'all had his email. And he had vertigo for a, uh, he's still working on it. He had vertigo. So. And I suspect, I mean, typically, no, he's not going to hear very many comments. I'm guessing. I, I mean, I, I've tried to build websites like for the Friends of Oscars here, and I tell everybody, boy, get back to me. Let and me know what you think. Nobody yeah, comes nobody back. Nobody comes back. <laughs> they don't yeah. need them. <laughs> In fact, we haven't had a chance, and I need to, we need to do that. And then after this meeting today, we have like two weeks, and hopefully we'll get a chance to go in and, yeah. and look at ours and get it set up. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I just think this thing needs to look like Griggs County. Not Fox News or CNN. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. That we should change that front page. The pages behind the front page. I mean, we can always rearrange things, and but, so. we in the future weeks. But but it, I'm just saying, if you would make that change, we could deploy it, and then make subsequent changes from there. <clears throat> Or who am I supposed to contact the social service building? Uh, 797 and then just go to zero. You can either talk to C or Tammy. 2127. But I guess if, if there's a consensus, I mean, I'll be happy to talk to Travis and just say our feeling is that we'd rather not have all that yeah. gobbledygook on there. CIA. You can go the gobbledygook CIA. From the page, but I mean, the first page should be kind of... Yeah, yeah the first page is especially, you wouldn't want Give to. you a direction to go. Yeah, so... I, it, it's like, when I go to Bank North Dakota's website... But that's the one for... They got all this yeah. stuff okay. spinning on yeah, there. And I, I mean, don't. you don't know where you're going. I, I just go to the site app. Mm -hmm. and go find what you're looking for. Because I don't want to wade through all the pages of graphics. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's cute. I'm yeah. angry. I want to know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Just a, um, everything fits on your screen so you don't have to scroll down and look for more choices and stuff. But I can t tell them that we'd prefer everything to fit on one screen and just clear menu choices. At least the menus, yeah. Not but all this uh, other stuff. Let people get where they're going to go. Okay, so I'll from the from the introduction screen, not have to not make them yeah. surf the site for five hours. steps to get. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so if everyone's in agreement, I'll do that. Yeah. Existing courthouse grants. Yeah. Oh. I mean, when I first saw that existing courthouse grant, it kind of made me sick. <laughs> uh, did, and I don't know if you looked at it, but I mean, just ju just starting to read through this stuff. I, I mean, there was all of this stuff about Davis Bacon and Title VI and more laws and more laws and more laws. And I said, geez, do we even want a federal grant, <laughs> you know, if we have to actually wade through this crap? But You know, you know what? My short answer is... <laughs> <laughs> sure, I want your short answer. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but... Uh, after I thought about it some more, the only thing I did do, I contacted Renaissance Engineering, and, and I just said, and she this is your copy of that, too. Okay. You know, um, I, oh, to the guy. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I just asked them if they would give us a free proposal to design a perimeter drainage system around it. And if they if they get they would just give us a proposal that they would do the design for so much, but then their design would have to have all of this language in it because we're required to take three bids and all that stuff. So we could kind of pass some of that on to Renaissance, and they would do a design of a primitive drainage system. I said the foundation wall should have a waterproof membrane on it, and then the ground would be sloped down, you know, and possibly some concrete paving. But they haven't gotten back to me yet. But that if we. It's up to us, I guess. Maybe we don't even want to hassle with it at all. Or <laughs> or if we do, I could write it up with Renaissance in mind to design. And, and then we could just apply. Well, I suppose we could apply for the full 15000 and say 5000 is for the design and the remainder. We'll take bids on it and <laughs> see what they come in. Right. I, I guess at this point in time, just my take on this thing is, 
if the EOC grant comes through, then we have we determine that we are going to live with this building in our yard, then yeah, I think we should continue to move forward with some way of doing that. Um, if that if one day we wake up and <clears throat> the Department of Emergency Services has told us that we're not going to get funded, then then I don't think we spend any money on this building because we're going to be in a world where it, yeah, that's because right in this agreement it says that we agree to maintain it for ten years. Uh, you know, acceptance of this, whether they gave us five thousand or whatever, we right. do agree to maintain it for another ten yeah, years. No years. matter the amount. No matter the amount. So, if we don't get the DES grant, you know, we're kind of free of that commitment mm -hmm. to maintain it. So, although we don't have any money to take it down, so at least we don't. I mean, we won't be putting money into it probably. Um, I don't know. It's pretty much why we didn't accept it the last time. Or do it the last time. The historic society grant. There was another one at the time for 25000 If you think of what the repairs that you have to do to this building, and they want to be able to say yes or no if you can even do them. And if they meet their standards, it's kind of tougher. Well, I know it's March. I know, but on the other, on the other side, the county, county commissioners agreed to the covenants and the EOC draft. That was before that, though. But I think in March there was a motion for me to fill out that grant request, mm -hmm. and I never did it. I, I mean, it wasn't that we decided not to. I just dropped the ball. <laughs> I just never got it Have done. you ever seen that cell in the basement? Yeah. <laughs> you did the double one, too? You did the double one? Yeah. Bob Oak's office. <laughs> um, there is a double cell phone. She got the suit. Oh, but I think Troy's right. It, it's we're sort of such a limbo here. Till I, don't, we, I don't think we can. Really Till we know what's going to happen. It's, mm -hmm. This oh. has a pretty short window to act on. Like mm -hmm. it's due the 18th, I think. So that, 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 you like, know, it it's it's crossed my mind that maybe the best course of action for the county moving forward would be to have a special election and see if the voters would just as soon we finish the courthouse, take out the building authority, set this thing up on a 15 mil tax levy and just pay for the dang thing and then it then decide what to do with this building later. Um, I, I don't think anybody is going to be happy having an unfinished courthouse and a deteriorating courthouse. I don't think that's a good end to the to this project. You know, and and with that said, even though the electorate was very unhappy with what the commissioners did. And they did replace those commissioners, albeit not before they did the damage that they did. We as citizens still put them in the position to do that to us. And the damage that was done during that period is still ultimately going to be borne by the citizens. You meant by you meant by to the building authority, didn't you? That's what I said. Didn't I? Take out. Uh, yeah, I five take take out. Tonight. Take out. I'll lay them up with either way you want to do it. <laughs> Red dots. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. They would. We, we would. Buy we would. Them. We would. I would be in. You know, those bonds aren't callable till 2021. So, if in fact we were to get the approval of the voters to let bonds for that 2.2 million. 
it's it's a detriment to the citizens in the in the amount of the interest that would be paid because you would be have to pay it on both both of those fundings yeah. those instruments unless we went to the bank of North Dakota and said you know what this thing's a mess we are we're going to try to sort it out can we go or will you go to those bondholders and say if we get approval from the voters will you swap this bond for this bond your yield won't change but the county taxpayers won't have to pay the interest twice we'll leave the terms like they are and the tranche is the same size or whatever you know after 2021 we don't have to we don't have to approach those bondholders because they're called in 2021 it's only the tranches between now and then so it's uh, it's basically six tranches, I think. That that was a doable thing six months ago, and it's a doable thing after this is settled. But until there is ownership on this building, until, until we decide the ownership and any liens against this building, that's not a doable thing because no one's going to authorize construction engineers is not going to authorize a change of ownership in that building unless they're paid what they're owed. And the only way they're going to be paid what they owed is through the legal system to determine who owes them the money. But if I think they would be willing to allow that to happen, I mean, they're not in a position not to. You know, unless they feel strongly enough that they can get a judge to compel the county to, I mean, we can't, we can't levy the taxes to straighten this thing out because of the ownership issue. Yeah. But a judge could compel us if in fact, we were, I mean, I don't know what the culpability of the building authority is. You know, who knows? Yeah, well, we, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I, we have a contract, we being the county has a contract with the building authority. Yeah. They are right, as we speak, they're in violation of that contract. Yeah. We need to pursue that first. There needs and to be, that, that there needs to be legal action taken against the building authority to hold them responsible for what they have contracted with, with us to supply. The outcome of that will determine the rest of the actions that are taken because if the building authority is being <coughs> liable for the um, the money left over, that will settle the issue with construction engineers. Construction they engineers, no ability, they? if they have stepped outside, and I think I believe they have, if they've stepped outside their cloak of immunity by agreeing to a contract of which they did not have the money secured and with that and they did that they, they agreed to a 2.9 million dollar contract of which they only had 2.2 million dollars secured then they are no longer insulated then then they become liable on an individual basis and then there is the possibility this could be settled but and i don't think it's that black and white because the, <clears throat> the county commission the county also is on that contract it, it, there's, there's, it's a separate issue we we signed that contract with with the building authority we being the county to provide those services that is a separate issue with the county signing the contract with it, the it blurs the funding that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, yeah, we, but we do, do need to move forward with something. We just can't let this lay in limbo. It just feels like we're not doing anything. I don't know that it's the right. I mean, if you're just going to wait here and wait for a cloud to fall on your head, you know. Well, I mean, are we on the new courthouse issue now? I mean, I, that was part of what I wanted to talk about here when we get there. Yeah, we're done with the court, existing courthouse grant, as far as I know. Yeah, and that's why I moved on. To okay, this. I'm sorry. Okay, no, no, I mean, I was just the, the, this. I wanted to talk about this because he, he just can't stand here and wait for something to happen. And we are the custodians of any agreement 
entered into with the county. And by not enforcing that document that we have with the building authority, we're being derelict in our duties. We're paying the money. Yeah. We're, we're, we're standing up to our side of it. They are not. I understand that. Now, was there a drop dead date on the performance of that contract? The drop dead date was the day it was signed. I mean, when were we supposed to be provided with the building? The day it was signed. That, that was, the day it was signed, we were obligated to that money whether they built that thing or not. No, I understand what our obligation is. Yeah. What's the obligation of the building authority? You said they were out of compliance with the agreement. Well, we don't have the building. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was right. left vague on purpose. Right. So, but there must be a, a reasonable, reasonable expectation of what we would have uh, occupancy or provided with a building that was there, occupied. And there's no occupancy date given because they made it a net sum lease for the very purpose of they didn't, they being the building authority, didn't want to be responsible for any cost associated with it. So at the time it was signed, we were leasing, we were leasing a piece of property that wasn't even built yet, but that's the way the lease read. So I don't know when, I don't know when and if that something needs to be done, but Again, we have, we're sending taxpayer dollars to the state of North for something that we, that we don't have. Yes, and sir. there is absolutely, hey Jamie, there's absolutely zero obligation in that lease agreement for the county to provide anything other than, <coughs> other than the tax levy. There, that grant is not tied to anything, anywhere, in any of these documents. And because it couldn't be, because how can you have public funds intercommingled with a private entity? Right. So I maybe we should catch Jamie up on the discussion here. Okay. We're just talking about the new house. Okay. Doesn't feel like we should do this thing forever. What's that? It doesn't feel to me right that we do nothing and just wait for somebody to compel us in some manner to take action. Either we should go to the people and ask for bonding authority to buy out the building authority and finish this thing, or we need to have the EOC grant get funded, or we need to tell the building authority that they need to finish the building because we are supposed to take occupancy within a reasonably expected completion date or something. S seems to me something should be happening. Then Troy asked the question, what is the occupancy date on the building and if there wasn't one, the occupancy date was the time to sign a contract with them. It went forward from that point, we were responsible for everything, but he pointed out that there must be a reasonable expectation of occupancy. How do we determine that? Are, is the building authority in violation? I contend they are right now. We were paying, we we're paying for a building that we can't use. I think that the reasonable expectation of occupancy would have been the date the building would have been, should have been finished, and that should have been in February. And, um, we don't have what they were supposed to give us at that time. Um, I don't disagree with Troy. I think it, having a building sit out there is best action to make, but I don't know what I don't know what the right thing to do is. Right 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 right. uh, sitting should, isn't <laughs> hardly an option anymore, is it? What's that? Sitting and doing nothing is well until well, we if we had like I mean I know we can't push the E E S to give us an answer to grant, but that would solve a lot of questions if we had an answer on my grant. Well, that, that almost, ha we almost have to wait for that. I mean, until we hear that DES grant, 
what the heck can we do? <laughs> well, what if it's three, four months? Well, we, we have to wait, don't we? I mean, I wouldn't want to put something... If it's only three or four months and it's going to happen, that's fine. At least if. I know what's going to happen. Yeah. But I don't know what's going to happen. No, I know. And I, I mean, we haven't been and we haven't been updated on this necessarily very often. Yeah. But, which tells me that there isn't an update. Um, if we make another payment, then I'd say we've exceeded the expectation date. But on, on the other side see. of the coin, Ron, okay, so we, so we do get the grant. And we're held to the covenants of the grant, which means we own two courthouses and we have to maintain them both. Yeah. Um, is the grant really a cost effective means of funding the courthouse, or is it better off to do it through the tax, with the help of the taxpayers, and then have the freedom to make a decision on what we're going to do with this building later? Yeah, it's and, and like John has said over and over again, that's just a matter of time. Yeah, that the grant will cost more than the grant benefit. Yeah, I, I just hate to put it out to a vote of the voters when it's such a big unknown. <laughs> it just seems like, uh, I mean, the voters, if they're going to vote yes or vote no, we should know a little bit more about that DDS yes grant uh, before before we ask people to vote on it. I I, I would. Personally, hate to take have the citizens take ownership of in this until we determine what the possible consequences of this thing are. I don't think you can go to the citizens one more time and give them that information. I, I'm not advocating that. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's a scenario: as the building sits right now, if if the grant doesn't come through. The way the building sits right now, look at all the money that was spent outside outside the covenants of 57, 15, 59. It was supposed to just be used to build court facilities and it's been used to build the whole damn thing. There's so many hidden gotchas involved in this thing that we need to leave the responsibility right where it sits right now. And I, let that get sorted out. I think if I wouldn't doubt if CD has litigation in the works and they're waiting to see what happens with this grant. I wouldn't doubt if the day after we find out that we find out that there, there is no grant or the grant is going to be denied. I wouldn't doubt that the day afterwards there's litigation filed. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, think they'll wait that long. I, I think I don't think they'll wait that long. I don't know why they would. They don't care what how the funding is secured to pay them to pay off that debt. Yeah, they, they would if they if they had to get a judge to compel us to levy the taxpayers to pay for that. They don't care if it's a grant or, or no, that. no, they don't. But I think in I think that this is a messy enough situation. I think that they're probably in the public eye. I think that they probably want to have a bad thing. People have a bad perception. I think that's why they're waiting there, you know. Yeah. I think that just from, I thought all along that what they're doing is solidifying their uh, their interest in the building. They're, they're trying to quantify how much money they put in there and what they're charged for. And when they got it to the point where that equaled or exceeded the guaranteed maximum price, they wouldn't have anything left to fight for. So they're in a big file suit. Well, that just happened here the other day. We just saw that they have already billed, haven't, it hasn't been accepted, but they've already billed for over the guaranteed maximum price. So I believe they're at the point now where they will move forward and file suit. Um, because they have nothing else. The, the fight on whether or not they're going to get paid doesn't matter whether or not it's for $3 million or $2.4 million. It's all in the same fight. So they have nothing to lose now. And that just happened the other day, wasn't it, Ron, where they... When you sent this off. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you look through that document, it's three point three million oh forty three. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think I think whether it be a week or four months, I think that's inevitable that the county is going to be sued and the building authority is going to be sued. And 
then the county certainly has an obligation to its citizens to make the building authority obligated to their terms of their contract with the county. And the only way that's going to happen is by the county demanding, first in letter form, and secondly, if SI is abated, legally demanding that the building authority step up and honor that lease agreement. So there's some homework for you. I mean, if it plays out that way, I think you should consider the options of how this plays out in preparation for the eventuality. Because, I mean, this thing is going to come to head. Well, it's and, and I, I have. I've already been on the phone with the insurance user if I'm speaking about this. Um, and in fact, they were supposed to get back with me this week and they haven't. Um, but I've been taught, speaking with the claims adjusters about it, and the, the answer he gave me the day is that the insurance reserve fund would likely be able to defend the county on any kind of claims from C based on um, what has been going on. Um, they were going to give me some more solid answers this week, and they hadn't have gotten back to me, so I'll probably try to call them first part of next week. And Depending on who's culpable. What's well, that? Depending on who's culpable. I, I think the reason the insurance fund would, would, would and correct me if I'm wrong, would, would step in behind this is because the county commissioners stepped outside their their role as county commissioners and by, by obligating the county to the $2.9 million. And, and, and that's, that's why they would step in. It's the yeah. tax emissions insurance that would be covering this. Right. Yeah. If it was if it was within the if it was within, own, but if it was for the contract, they wouldn't defend the contract. But no, they, they're going to defend the actions of the previous commission, right? Um, and uh, you know, like I said, uh, as far as my preliminary answer to them was yes, that they would defend that. Okay, but 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 the problem is they're going to defend it, and if, if they win in their defense, that makes the county liable for it. It's a double. It, it's it's a wrong. It's it's a double-edged sword. The insurance fund's going to defend. If they win, we're liable, and that isn't the outcome that I think we should have. Isn't that correct? Well, I think I think there's probably other parties that probably are necessary to be brought in, and I think that's probably what will what'll happen. I don't know who's representing us, so I you know I can't. Yeah. You know, discuss anything. And they probably until there's an actual suit, they probably won't contact an attorney. Um, I guess we're actually subject um, to two suits up in Nelson County right now. We have two different civil attorneys that are, are handling it. Dan Goss did all the piercing Christians and handling one of the cases. And um, uh, uh, Harold Swanson, one of the Swanson and Work Cup, Work Cup and Swanson, they're handling the other one. So it, it depends on the situation, too, as far as who's going to handle it. But, I think that I think that there there would probably be other parties brought in other than I think I think there's more parties that are liable that would have to be parties something oh, like that. Yeah. Okay. But then on the, on the, we keep talking about what if the grant dollars are approved, that doesn't get us doesn't cover everything. anywhere near resolving this. And you, you brought it up last meeting. How do we send those grant dollars to a private entity and we can't? Not to, not to mention that we have $767,000 that we've already sent there that needs to be recovered when those grant dollars come in. Plus another 300, it appears $312,000 in 2012 that was spent outside of the budget on this project. So the colony has already contributed a million dollars towards this thing. Uh, I think the 787 included the 312. Uh, yep, it did. Well, I thought the 312 was the previous year. Oh, that was the year before. The year oh, before. I see what you're saying. 
three the year before in 2012, it appeared there was okay. $312,000 that was spent outside the budget, yeah. as in 2013 or 2017. And even some back to 2011. Yeah, there I didn't go back that yeah. far. Yeah, you're right. So, so it appears, it appears <coughs> like that's a million dollars that close to the whole grant fund has been spent already by the county. So if and when the, the grant fund comes, it's going to have to go to be reimbursed the county what they spend. It's not going to construction engineers. And that's just the way it is. The boys bought themselves a building instead of the county. That's right. Okay. Well, we'll have to. It's only speculation at this point. We, we just have to ask. We just. We're all in the middle of the ocean and we can't take the sails down. Yeah, I think it's going to be an evaluation and to think of our options and what's going to happen because it's, it's inevitable that something's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Well, we do need just to take action against the building probably fairly soon because we, we can't let them be in violation of that lease agreement and, not, and do nothing about it. Hey. Something that's not speculation is this invoice on page 78. Mm -hmm. Should have Jamie look at it too, because I don't know who's responsible for it. Well, it's addressed to the Griggs County Building Authority. Yeah. Griggs County slash Building Authority. Oh, okay. I thought. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> Apparently, a copy of this was sent to the Building Authority, and if it wasn't, I think we should report it to them. I think it already has. What page? Yeah, I think Robert Johnson. 78. Second to last page. Just about the last. Yeah. Oh, I read right, that. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind of physical coverage on that building, or is it just liability? Well, that's according to the bank forward. There is uh, they, construction engineers has insurance on, mm -hmm. but they're the they're the they're the lost payee, which stands to reason because if it burned down, they'd have to build it. Or <laughs> <laughs> not, not according to the lease agreement. The, from the time from the time we signed the lease agreement, the county was in charge of insuring that building right from its inception. From the time it was from the time. But I think you got to look at the at the construction engineer's contract. Yeah, I not know. the lease agreement. I'd say they're going to maintain their insurance until they get the money from the county. Building. Well, they bought the insurance at Bank Forward, and I went and talked to the agent. Yeah. yeah. It's still in force. Yeah. yeah. So. That's all we care about. Until they delivered the keys to the court to the county, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't continue to insure it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I have one quick thing. Um, Not on the agenda. I just, um, the, the directors of both Nelson County Social Services 
And Great Colony Social Services presented me with a memorandum of, of agreement between the two colonies for the joint powers and the sharing of services. Um, we better wait. We, we better stop and put this on the agenda. If there's no desire. I don't think it needs to be done today. Okay. Does it? And we can't talk no, about no, it. I'm not asking it to be okay. I'm asking for your blessing since I have represented both the counties in, in the agreement. So I think it <laughs> should be on the agenda. <laughs> we can't talk about it until we do something and decide to put it on the agenda or decide not to. What are your wishes, boys? Put it on the agenda for next meeting. I think what he's asking for is permission to work. Uh, I, make a, I make a motion that we add the social services to the agenda for this meeting. <laughs> the move that we add the social services memorandum of understanding to the agenda is our second in the motion. I second. Second by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. What's next on the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> Troy, is, Troy is exactly right. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to take a look at it, I'm not, I haven't been involved with any negotiations on it. I've kept it until they both set me the memorandum of agreement. And, they want me to look through the legal terms of what my understanding is of it, and um, I was, I'm was i seeking the blessing of both commissions to take a look at it since I am the state's attorney in both counties. You got, you're kind of involved with it, aren't you, being on the board? Can you kind of feel it? I see you know what's going on. I, I, I well, it's a right. real simple agreement. At least it should be. But like, <laughs> the women can't get along. Okay. That, that won't change with a memorandum of your understanding. Because we had a joint board meeting, we agreed to the wording of this thing, mm -hmm. and then Marsha changed it and sent it back to Sia, and she said, well, what do you want me to do? Well, I, it, and this was in the, in the social services board meeting. Well, is it, is it materially different than it was? I don't care about the punctuation and the sentence structure. Is it different? Does it mean anything different than it did before? Well, not really. Except for this one paragraph, I don't, I don't think we should add that because we didn't talk about it in our joint board meeting. Fine, take that out. Let her have her way on the wording of the sentences. If it doesn't change the agreement, let her be the boss. I don't care. You know, she's she's. I think Marsha would like to just end the thing, but. It doesn't make sense to do that when you have two small counties. You should be able to realize some economies by cooperating. But to do that, you have to cooperate. Yeah. And by her way, they would increase their employees. Um, one thing that I would like to explore in the future, and I don't know how to, to roll the ball, um, I was looking through the state statistics on on social on welfare departments, and there are areas like Oliver and gosh, what are one of the counties out there by Hayes and Beulah? Mm -hmm. They have four counties and they have one welfare department. Hmm. You go down in the Slope County and Bowman, and there's a whole bunch of counties down there. They don't have they don't have this dreadful setup that we have. I, I don't know why we couldn't have Steele, Griggs, Nelson, Teddy, Benson, Foster have at the, the regional welfare system. And if we have to have an employee or two in each of the county seats, that's fine. But not have all of this administration. I think the state is looking into taking over. Well, and the state is actually doing that. I think Darren Burst talked about that at the, at the my my only you know my hesitancy to do that is 
when I watch the state waste our tax dollars, I don't think they're going to do it better. Well, they, they'll do it, but it'll cost way more. They're talking about having a completely state-funded system, but having a, still... A, there's an, there's an no such thing as state-funded. No, look, it, it's a hand from property tax, right? It, it's, Government it's, does not create wealth. But I, I think that they're <laughs> taking away that specific level from what my understanding is, but they, it's, it's going to be a completely <laughs> different system than what it is. Um, but the county is still, still, still supposed to control that there's still supposed to be a county autonomy in it too so I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work it's something that they're going to approach at this upcoming legislative session and it's something to watch because we no one really knows what's going to happen the association of counties doesn't really know how it's going to work Darren didn't know how it was going to work last week I just so that your, brain trust out there systematically destroying the transportation system in North Dakota. I can't imagine they're going to fix welfare. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't. I don't think it. I mean, I don't think it will. If it's going to be some kind of system that kind of uses it. I've already gotten myself in enough trouble at the state level. So, what's your recommendation? So, you need approval to. What's your recommendation? Well, I, I think Jamie should. We had all the green, or the details we had worked a out. We're meeting at the Bank of the West building, yeah. and yeah. we all worked out the details in that market, Jamie. Okay. So I think that's fine. If you want to be the mediator between mm -hmm. those two, uh, okay. you go ahead. No, and that's kind of what, that's what, you know, I, until I talked, I've got received emails from both Sia and, and Marsha. And, you know, and, and you as their state's attorney, you, you decide now. They never decide things as a board up there in, their, in the welfare department. It's always the executive board. The executive board told me to do this. The executive board told me to do that. And I called Bruce Ellerson, who's on the board, but not on the executive committee, because the executive committee is a 95-year-old lady and an 89-year-old lady or something. <laughs> They're not going to stand up to Marsha. She's a strong person. Mm -hmm. So she calls them, and they say, oh, yeah, okay, that sounds okay. Then she goes and does something, and then shoots at the Griggs County, and then... <laughs> well, I can understand the conflict between those two. I mean, it's pretty I don't want to... I don't care. Uh, I don't like no, I, I, I've I, had employees that don't like each other. It's being confused with not liking each other. It's being sued. They've had to hire lawyers just to cover them on whatever she comes up with. So it's not just about... I'll take it. That's all I was asking was for permission to, to go through the contract or the agreement because I did the same thing up in Nelson County. I haven't taken a look at it at all until I had your guys' blessing because I thought that would be the proper thing to do. I mean, I mean you can mediate it, but you can't oh, represent right. both Nelson and Steele if like yeah, there's agreements. I mean, that's well, obviously well, 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 interesting. I, I, I understand that, but I, you know, so... I just, I'm going to end up being the mediator, I'm sure. Just too. the mediator, don't represent one against the other. The way she approaches it. There's a precedent for that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she has something to gain, then she loses all the control. Anyway. So do we need a motion or we just... Uh, probably appoint me as a person that mediates the situation. As fun as that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to volunteer for a nice job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, they did it last year too, and it actually didn't go too terribly bad, I don't think. So, I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be hard. It, does, it really doesn't have to be. But it can be if you want it to be. Well, if your two boards are cut together, just say, well, this is the way it was. Let's just sign that one and go. Yeah, and Marsha all the time, she would come up with changes all the time. No matter what we're doing today. Anyway. Well, I will um, sit down with them and let them hear the grievances and, and probably forward them back to the boards. Okay. I think that's probably the safest and the cleanest way to do it. Sounds good. I think a motion to adjourn. Then move to adjourn. Is there a second for the any discussion? Is there any discussion? Second. Sure. Any further discussion? Second.
see none we'll proceed to vote on favor say aye aye opposed same time motion carries meeting adjourned next meeting will be on 17th 18th 18th july the 18th One p.m.